All right, beautiful friends. Here we are today together with Alex, a great friend of mine that I have known for, I don't know, 16, 17 yeah. years. Yeah. When I met Alex, Alex was a creative director and an owner of Crispin Porta Bagaski, CPMB, um, one of the top agencies in the world. And it became one of the top agencies under Alex's leadership. He got many prizes as one of the best art creators in this industry. Edwick named him creative director of that decade. So, and he loves bikes. Love bikes. And you were my trainer. I was. I was his personal physical, trainer. Physical, physical trainer. I was his personal trainer, and when I, I will never forget the time I met you for the first time to train you. I was supposed to take you on a bike ride to okay. show you around Boulder because you had just moved to Boulder from Florida, and I'm like, okay, I'll take this guy for a bike ride, and I was a little bit caught up in my ego, like I'm strong, I'm. I race bikes, and then I meet him, and I can barely keep up with him. <laughs> so it's like, why do you need me to ride bikes with you? So, um, but long story short, never bring an ego to Boulder biking. Never yeah. bring <laughs> an ego to Boulder <laughs> bike. Right. I've learned that. And uh, but what's cool about our story is that we're not close friends at that time. I was your trainer. You were a high achiever. You were on the top of your career, I was traveling. On the cover of uh, Fast Company. Yeah, you were the cover of Fast Company. So I barely communicated with you. I always communicated with your assistant. Right. That's how busy you were. And well, also not just how busy I. I, I think I, at that point <laughs> I was a you know I had a different relationship with the the mirror that is our is 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 the world that we perceive it right, and so that world annoyed me a lot. Right. And so I would outsource a lot of interactions to assistants and other people and it allowed me to just pick and choose what are the interactions that I find most enjoyable and I would only do those things. Yes. And you were always so graceful because as I shift my career from a trainer to become an entrepreneur, opening my own business, my coaching business, you always said yes to a cup of coffee with me to help me. So I don't forget those moments. No. And then we went many years without talking and all of a sudden we reconnected about a year, year and a half ago. Basically through God. We were both in a, in a very different path in our lives. We kind of seen each other growing up in a way from distance. You're just going to throw out the G word. I got to throw the G <laughs> word, you know? I, I'm going to keep my G word in, in, <laughs> che in check. I'm going to keep it in check. So, if you listeners get triggered with the G word, replace by anything you like. No, I like that. Yeah, exactly. Replace, replace by love, by light, by life force, universe. Source. Source energy, creative source. Source energy. So, I want to dive in into... How you my, my friend calls it the big Oreo in the sky. Like the it, big Oreo. It doesn't. It doesn't. It, it doesn't care what you call it. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you call. Yeah. You might not even call anything at all. But you call it something because you'll encounter it somewhere along <laughs> your journey. You will wind up putting some words to it. There you go. It's the way we communicate, right? We need the yeah, words. We need the words. So I'm gonna dive into. I think one of the best parts this of this conversation. This is fun already, by the way. It's super this fun because you fun. keep interrupting me, so it's yeah. perfect. And one of the things I want to say is, when you were a trainer, I knew that you were not satisfied being a trainer. It was really interesting to see you like eventually go into life coaching and other stuff that was, that was a little bit more, it was broader, right? It was more to the, the, the cut to the issue. Yep. And, um, but, but I was thinking about it on the way over that, that when we when we turn inwards right so we turn away from the the experience of, of of judging this external world what we believe is an external world when we turn inwards sometimes we turn to body first and it's and and i think it's body and health are often the first things True. that that then lead to really the turn towards consciousness which has very different rewards than the body, which which clearly keeps you in the physical, right? 
That's a very good point because I turned into the body starting my when I was 18, 19, and I fitness was my life. Mm -hmm. So in a way, exercise, being always fit, being always strong, identifying myself as an athlete helped me to navigate a lot of stress and helped me to suppress my own traumas for a long time until I could tell it wasn't your thing though. I could tell it wasn't your thing. Yeah. There's so much more. I just, I don't know. But there are other trainers. I'm like, that's their thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Until they encounter. Until, I mean, everybody is going to eventually (laughs) encounter something they'll have to name. You can call crisis. You can call midlife crisis. You can call many things. But what's fascinating is, is, is you... You quit your career when, you know, you're kind of on the top of your career, people would say. You were soaring. You were making all the money, flying private jets, riding the yachts, being invited for, I'm sure, a lot of celebrities' parties. And you quit. You quit and um, you rode a lot of bikes and you engaged in other adventures. And then five years ago, I believe it was five years ago, something dramatic happened in your life. Yes. Should that, I talk about that? Should we say that that shifted the course of your life? Yeah, I, I, it definitely did. I, I, I'm just to go a little bit further mm-hmm. back. Um, I did, I did grow up in a Greek Orthodox church for a short time because my grandmother would sneak me to church. Within, but by the time my dad found out about it, she made she, he he made it so I couldn't go back because he was a devout a- atheist. And um, then later in my life, my parents were Scientologists, so they kind of dragged me into that for a period of time from about thirteen to seventeen, eighteen. I I left. Um, and interesting experience. Really, don't have a lot negative to say except that there was no. Within the teaching, I never encountered anything to mitigate the ego. And even that early in my life, I had just had this feeling like the ego is what gets you in trouble, right? So you didn't cons- consider yourself a spiritual person, even though you were introduced to Scientology? I think I was pretty, I, I think I would have said I was spiritual. I would even call when you I was a spiritual an atheist, in the closet even when, when I, I met you. Yeah, well, you knew me, I was probably. Probably like a Boulder Buddhist, I call it, you know? Um, and my whole life, I'm reading everything I can to um, essentially, I think this is a very Western idea, where you're trying to put together some idea of how the world works. And you believe that once you get the final piece, it's going to lock into place, and then you're going to have a kind of uh, awakening or understanding that just comes from the intellect. And that was my belief, and I was adding what I call rocks to the box. You know, the box already has too many rocks, and I put another one in, and it's really rattling around, and I'm like, let me put one more in, and it just gets louder in there. Um, and, uh, and it doesn't work. doesn't work. And, and, you know, in my career, there's a lot of people that are helping you with your ego. Um, <laughs> yes. And... Other people, you know, like doing the opposite because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the, it's the, it's the belief in, um, uh, that it's a kill or be killed world. It's the belief in that. So what, no matter how Gentile it might be, you know, or gentle it might be, it's still gnarly, right? It's still It's a competition. Yeah. It's fighting for gain. Someone's got to lose. Someone's got to win all the time. So... Leaving my career, I thought, um, I spent a lot of time in, in my mind trying not to be an ad guy, right? Mitigating the ego, using what I knew of Buddhism to not be attached to, to whatever I could not be attached to. Um, but it only kind of worked. Still, when I left my career, even though I was prepared for it, I decided to do it, I wanted to do it, it pulled the rug out from under me in a lot of ways. And I, I spent at least two years with, with one of the things running through my head being, I don't know how the world works anymore. 
and when I so you lost your identity in a way when you quit that career and you the noise of all the attention stopped it's not really because I was still kind of a well-known entity yeah. I was working with Al Gore all the time on climate so that that wasn't what no it was it was just um, I don't know what it was I think it was yeah. true I think it was just truth I don't I didn't know how the world worked before now I was starting to understand it more. that my operating system my egoic operating system was not understanding the truth like I, you know you're always searching well what's the truth behind these things I think if you're introspective at all you you can tell things are not quite right. Let's say that someone, right, how often do you hear from a, someone wins? The great, now I had this, I won every award in the industry, I won it multiple times, I won Microsoft, I won Volkswagen, I won all sorts of clients. It never felt that good. It only felt good for the shortest period of time, mm. right? And if you look at podium interviews with, with bikers or anybody winning, right, it's so often that, that the, you know, the interviewer, the press is convinced that this must feel amazing. How does it feel? And they almost always say, it doesn't feel real, or I, I don't think it's soaked in yet. I don't know. I don't really, you know, I'm not sure. I'll have to get back to you on that. It's almost always like that. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and, the, and that's the other one where that happens often is when someone passes away hmm. who you love, right? How often do you say, it doesn't seem real, it doesn't seem real, it doesn't seem real. Now, part of me was like, maybe way, way deep, part of me is like, it's, maybe it's not real. There's and a knowing in you. There's a knowing in all of us that if we go into a practice, we can mm -hmm. remove the blockage between that knowing and, and uh, which is our, the knowings are our essential self. Yes. Right? Um, but, uh, yeah, I, so for me, um, I was, I was encountering karma. You don't have to encounter karma, but I was encountering karma because of where, you know, uh, where I was in mind. And, um, the way it works is you get a, you know, you get, alarm goes off, you get a little wake up call, you get a little concussion, you get a little bit, it, but, but it increases the, the, the intensity of the wake up call to awaken increases. And for me, the one that, that was just too much was I was riding bikes with my best friend since we were 12 years old, lifelong friends work together. Um, Probably the first guy to really teach me about compassion, actually, you know, mm -hmm. when we were 12. And, and he had an accident and he broke his neck and uh, we were riding together and, and I ran back up the trail and I found him and he, you know, I saw him pass. He was in my arms and the life left his eyes and it's an intense thing to talk about even now, you know. Um, and boy, for two years, I, you know, did therapy. I did the things that Talk were traditional. Therapy. Yeah. Okay. The traditional things that you might do. And it just was not getting better. I didn't have the tool set to kind of get over this one yeah. using what I didn't realize, which was the, the, the egoic body mind, right? The identification with myself as separate from the rest. Even though I would tell you that it's some place we're connected, I absolutely would explain things that way. I hadn't experienced it and I didn't probably have an understanding of it that was sufficient, right? So I I I uh I just was not happy, you know? And and I, I spent a bunch of time really unhappy and getting by and no one would know I was not happy. Yeah, what did that look like yeah. for you? Yeah. Because you say I wasn't happy. How did you know you were not happy? When uh for whatever reason I've always since I was young, I would measure my happiness from one to ten. And and I did when I was a Scientologist, 
there was something I learned in Scientology. I couldn't tell you what it was, but I noticed my happiness went from a 6.5 to a 7. <laughs> and the whole rest of my life, I couldn't move my happiness. Mm -hmm. I did everything I could. And when I'd ask my kids, you know, what are you guys? I'm a, you know, I'm a 7. They're like, oh, I'm like an 8 or 9. I'm like, yes, that's awesome. Because, you know, you obviously want people that you love to be sure. happy. We want to be happy. And happier right? than me sounds good because I'm okay. I'm getting, you know. Yeah. And, uh, no, it felt it felt like it felt like I went to a 6.75, you know. <laughs> it, it, it was just, um, and there was the, there was the, 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 the associated, um, I guess you'd call it PTSD. If you touch my neck, yes. I'd flash back to the moment. Wow. You know. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so I, there was, if I watched a movie and there, you know, like so many things seem to bring it back up and there I was again, you know, so not moving that, that pain into a long-term memory. I, it was looping in a short-term memory, yeah. Yeah. right? This is how a psychiatrist would explain it. Yeah. Um, I ran into a friend and, uh, this friend was formerly suicidal. Didn't know that because you know we all hide our pain. Yeah. People wonder why do celebrities commit suicide, right? How, how, how is it that that guy commits suicide? And they always say he was always so happy. And so it's like, happy. No, on the outside he was happy. Yeah. He was hiding. Yeah, so, yeah. so yes. happy. Beautiful wife or spouse. Yeah. Beautiful kids. Yeah. Incredible career. Yeah. Right. Lots of money. It's always the same story. Lots of money. So if you're looking for those things to create happiness. Just know they ain't gonna work. They're not working for anybody. Mm -mm. Um, now, you you doesn't mean don't pursue these things, but but know that they won't create happiness. I, I was I was fortunate in a way to exhaust the idea of finding happiness externally. So I tried to find it with, like you said, this career, this house. Maybe I need more houses. I need four houses. I, this, I don't have enough houses. I don't have enough cars. I don't have enough. You know, whatever it is, try all those different You bought versions. the formula. Yeah, totally. You Who, bought the formula, you? the American formula. Buy more. Get Buy more. more and or the other formula that's very popular right now is experience more. Right? So it's the same thing. Experiences within this and the, you know, attempt to own within this, it's the, it's the same thing. Yeah. The, so I did both those things. And, and, um, and then... Um, you know, I'm, it's not like I'm unhappy, but I'm the same. It's nothing's changing. And then my friend dies in my arms. Um, and now it's acute, you know, yeah. whatever the suffering is acute and seems like something has to be done. My friend has done ayahuasca. He's in front of me. He's glowing. He's telling me about, you know, his experiences. He's very shy at first, but because he wouldn't talk about it normally some people are shy about these experiences yes. right i happen to not be like which i'm so glad because especially now we people are so curious about psychedelic experiences not that anybody needs necessarily to do a psychedelic uh, journey in order to heal and yet it's really hard to work with the ego with traditional therapy especially in case of trauma Huge difference, huge difference. And so, in in so what I, my friend was doing ayahuasca. I'm I'm not a I'm not a drug person. Whatever a drug person is, I don't mean to paint that. <laughs> like I've just never been into drugs. Yes. People look at me, me and they're like, "You live in yeah. Boulder. You must smoke a lot of weed." And it's no. like, "No, not really." You know, um, you must do this. You must do that. And it's like it's just not not my thing, and definitely not my wife's thing, right? And uh, so. I told her I want to do this. I need to do this. I feel like it's it's worth a try because I'm sort of desperate. Um, and, but I know if I go to South America, you know, she's not going to be here when I get back. You wouldn't come back. You might. No, I, I hope I live I, with the Indians there. <laughs> I think I would come back. I think I would come back. But I, but but I don't know that she would be there. Yes. With, um, and so I found a guy in Boulder um, who did it but he but he doesn't do there are journeys that are here that are clandestine that you know people don't talk about um 
which brings up a whole nother story, which is I think you can get a lot of different medicine, you can get a lot of different shaman, and so it's worth doing your due diligence on those things. Um, the, uh, this guy does it with cannabis, and he blends three, two different kinds and then a hybrid, and you vape it, there's a whole ceremony, he's, he's, a, he's a shaman, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Daniel uh, McQueen okay. is his name, and you can put a link to Daniel's. I'll put a link in the show uh, notes. Yeah. Um, he does it. His wife does this kind of work. They also use ketamine. I think now mm -hmm. they're using uh, mushrooms because that's now a thing in Colorado, yeah. um, or they will be. I'm not sure where that is. But you know, I'm like, well, it may not work, and I'm sort of skeptical going in, thinking it's probably not going to work. But it's not going to hurt me. I love that you're skeptical because right there it shows that in this journey with medicines, your thinking mind, your ego doesn't really have the power to block the experience because you went with that belief, this might not work. And the, the other thing the ego was giving me is a bit of fear, you know. Of course, they don't know. And, and, and uh, you know, in different ways. And, and, and the fear, um, one of the... At the very beginning of the session, there's a bed, and and um, at some point, as you start to feel the the psychedelic aspect come on, which for me was just colors start started to change. He gave mm -hmm. me that as as a as a signal. Mm -hmm. Lay back. You begin to do your thing. I was afraid he was going to kill me. Literally. Literally. Like, I'm like, not like I thought it would happen, but I thought it could happen. Because so, I don't know him. I'm on a bed in the middle of some vulnerable. weird little office in Boulder, right? And, yeah, that was what came up for me. So, so, I, so I, I decided to tell him. I'm like, you could stab me in the chest while I'm here. Right. I don't know why stab me in the chest was the thing too, you know, but that was that a, was for you because I'm sure the fear let's just to clarify anybody that is curious about doing psychedelic journeys is that the fear is always going to be present. So you can't wait for the day that you're going to wake up in the morning and say, oh, today I'm not fearful and you're going to do the experience. The fear is always going to be present. That's why safety is so important but some people go and they go into a room with 40 other people and they drink wow. I, you know I, I know that I couldn't have done that the first time yeah so if you, if you can't do that there are alternatives there's different ways yeah. to find a way in and um, yeah um, so I guess I'll just skip, skip I'll skip forward for, and then we'll go back but but when I was done my wife was still a bit upset with me and I was describing the experience, and we were at dinner, and the, you know, my kids are grown, they're 23 and 26, and we're all talking about, you know, what I experienced, and, um, and at some point she's like, would you want the kids to do this, you know, like, like you don't want the kids doing something like this, and, and uh, the honest answer was, absolutely. I love that. I, and only if they wanted it, of course, sure. and they felt that it would be helpful. But of all the experiences in my life, and this is a hundred percent true, it's in, it's in the, there's only this many that would even compare, you know, getting married, having children. I'm maybe out. There's only maybe three in this journey. Like that's how high the experience ranks in everything that I've, you know, every private jet ride or whatever people think is going to be cool, you know, every perfect wave, every perfect line on a mountain bike, like, no, not even close, not in the, you know, the best sex you've ever had, like, it doesn't make the list. So, that's startling. So how did that journey heal that suffering of the, the loss of your friend? The, the, um, it started as a, first, first I was afraid he was going to, you know, <laughs> I had to deal with that fear. Then we had some, um, events show up that he determined that were maybe past life or something, but we couldn't find a beginning or end to them. And they, I don't know what they were, right? But they were really painful and scary. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of freaking out about them. And we, he just said, we're moving on. And we just moved, mm -hmm. um, which was so the right decision. Because then, 
that everything became just essentially many, many positive experiences. The, the first one being, um, I think I, I think it was, it, I had only thought about this the other day, but it's like a Kundalini awakening, which I don't know, that's the other thing about this show, or at least my experiences. Like, it's not special to have any of this happen, right? It doesn't make you special, it's like everyone has this experience waiting for them inside. Mm -hmm. um, and that was so clear as a communication in every moment of my journey, was that everyone is coming along. Everyone is on the same exact path and same journey back to that source energy. It's up to you to decide when, right? You do it, when you pause, when you, when you resist, but everyone... You are saying that all, if we look at all humanity, all everyone, either they know consciously or not, everybody is on this path. Whether you know it consciously or not. And no one, you know, it's like no one gets left behind, no man left behind. Yeah. No, I nobody, like yeah, no one gets left behind. Right. Th uh, that was very clearly communicated. It was beautiful. To, to so in a way, you're either walking consciously and enjoying this ride, or you're walking unconsciously and you might have to walk through many more lifetimes. Yes. But in a way, I think it goes with something I realized not that long ago, that deep inside, in the core of our suffering, which is the separation, we are all longing for source. We might say we're longing for love and you a lot of people think they need, they're going to find that love in a relationship right. <laughs> or, or in a career, but it's not. It's, it's longing for the love with capital L. And I realized sometimes in my meditations, I said, God, I've been longing for you my entire life. And to get to that place and made me realize, just like so everybody's on this path, either they conscious or unconscious, but that's the longing that so many people, like all of us, Every, everybody. Source. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, whether, you, whether you're aware of it or not, and, and it's like, it, there's no pressure. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And there's no judgment, and you can't really be ahead or behind is the truth, too, because it's all coming back into a, into a oneness, you know? Like, when you first start the journey, I feel like, at least my, my egoic version of it is like, oh, I want to attain this thing this special state, whether, you Very know, easy. this happiness, I want to attain these certain powers, right? And, and stuff happens like that, like, that does happen. But what you find is it all switches and you don't care about yourself. Like, the reason why I would do this show is because there's one person, I guarantee you, there's one person writing, watching right now, and you can write in the comments that it's you. It, that's all, that's the only reason the 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 numbers game of like oh I got a uh, hundred thousand views on this thing that's meaningless that is be meaningless be because the it's the it's the wrong math a hundred thousand people that you're helping put to sleep is is not the goal and and you your goals change they become less about yourself and that's that's uh it's one of the it's one of the uh, absolutely uh, best parts of the journey and it's not like it ever ends. I'm pretty sure it never ends. Um, but, but you don't have to be on it that long for that switch to move from, you know, being in service of your own uh, happiness to really being in service of like a broader, more inclusive, pluralistic mm -hmm. happiness. So I'm laying there and, and uh, I could see this energy moving through my body and it's all different colors and everything and it's, and it's, and uh, this is fun to admit now. It was very, it was horrible to experience in a way, but it was, it was coming all the way up and it was stopping right here, right? And it was in my arms and it was in my legs, but it was stopping right here. Energy, you mean? The energy, yeah. this, okay. this light, this surging energy coming up my spine, stopping right here. And That's an interesting spot to stop. Oh yeah. There's you, a meaning. Yeah. That's our, where our fear sits. 
I don't know any of this stuff at the time, right? <laughs> you didn't I'm not, know about chakras. And, not really. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't have told you what chakras what. But this yeah. is the this is the heart chakra. That's, so this is love right here, right? Oh, you got block right below. Yeah. So yeah. It, no, it was blocked at love because I'm really good at yellow, mm -hmm. which is like, hey, do you want to make money on this plane? It's like, yeah, I can do Real that. Real power, yes. Right. I, I can I can force what I want and squeeze it out of this, right? And I'm not afraid of this much. I can get what I want out of it. But man, I was blocked right here. On the heart center. Yeah. So so I'm like sitting there, I'm like, do I tell him? Do I not? It's kind of embarrassing, you know? Like it's just. <laughs> and so I tell the shaman, because you're in this sort of. You're you're once you're there, you know. And by the way, as soon as you the journey begins, you don't. It's not like being. This is important for people who are afraid of these kind of things too. It's not like being high. It's not, it's in, in fact, in, very, in a lot of ways, it's the opposite. You remember everything, and everything is very, in very intense detail, right? This is a great point because a lot of people, including some of my friends, are terrified of doing a psychedelic journey for healing because of their terrible experiences they had in the past, either with cannabis or acid or mushrooms. Mm -hmm. So it's doing in a setting for healing that's what you're saying. It's completely different. It's totally different. Yeah. And when you when you do it recreationally, let's say you went to a concert and did mushrooms, mm -hmm. right? You're straddling two worlds. Yeah. The 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 medicine is a is a sort of uh, hack to allow humanity when it needs to to look through the veil and see what's on the other side, right? Now to abuse that medicine, which is yes. to just do it for fun, the medicine is not. The medicine has its own kind of consciousness. It's not going to be s cool with that all the time. Yeah. So it will spank you. You know. That's a great description. It's it's. We need to respect these medicines as as healers, as teachers. It's in, it, it, it it is it is incredible to to um, be a human being, to believe you're a human being, to believe that you're that you're in this body and that's all you are. But then to have access to something that will pop you up above mm. and allow you to see where you are on the map and, 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 to, and, to, and to spend a little bit of time in truth learning about truth. And that's what they do. You can, even, even if you look, if, and if you want to look at it scientifically, these, these medicines slow the brain down. They're not creating an experience that's more vibrant, that's crazy and has this and has that. They're just slowing the brain down so the, so the, so the true experience that's hidden starts to come through. Mm -hmm. And so, so for me, um, that energy thing happened. He said, look for a little hole, which was, I don't know what that meant, but I, you know, just okay. everything's happening in consciousness. So I looked for a little hole and yeah, that's all it took. And, and so boom, this same light started shooting up, right? It opened and it, your heart. It, well, it went right through the heart, went up through the head, and it just went on and on, and it was. So I sat up, he, and afterwards, and he's in the medicine, and he's like, "Oh, your your uh, your uh, crown chakra turned on," you know, and again, I don't. I, these words do not matter, by the way. Yes, like, you don't you need don't, to know anything about and you don't need energy to, centers. And are yes. chakras real? Yes. Are they also not real? Yes. <laughs> it's all energy. Yeah. And so, and so your experiences, your experience may vary. Um, and, and, and so, uh, that was, that was, that was pretty profound. Right. And I'm like, I would have, I would have paid a million dollars for just that probably. Right. Um, that was the other thing. People, people were like, what's it worth? And I'm like, it's worth everything. 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 Second mortgage Every in your house. Yes. <laughs> it's worth everything. Like it is the. And then the experience that comes afterwards is going to be your your daily experience afterwards is going to be very different, and it's going to open up learnings that were not really teachings that that you weren't ready for before. I I want to pause you here because a lot of people are seeking these experiences and for healing to get close to God, whatever reason is. And what I'm finding is that a lot of people are not integrating well. Yeah. And they will spiral or they will 
get caught again in the thought, well, that wasn't enough. I need to go back for another yeah. medicine journey. Yeah. So speak a little bit about the integration time, how important that is because you've blasted, your, all your perception is changed. You're not the same person coming the other side because a lot of the, the trial... No, you're not. You're absolutely different. So you're absolutely I, different. Can I so. tell just the, the Dave part of the first part yes, of the journey, please, though? Yes, please. And, and then don't let me forget to... We'll talk integration, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. the, so so in the, in the, in, I laid back down, right, and went back. And you use this terminology. You, you say, I was here, and then I was coming back, and mm -hmm. I thought this, and I wanted to come back. It, none of it's like being high or drugged. Um, it is very much like a journey. Now, you're not really going anywhere, clearly. Um, uh, but you do encounter a lot of what feels like movement. So for, for me, the, the, the next phase was, there's some other things that I'll skip over, but the next major phase was moving through these, uh, what would look like mountains and trees and, mm -hmm. and valleys and hills, but they were all crystalline. Like, mm. So every leaf seemed to be made of like lots of crystals and, and the colors were, you know, more vibrant and maybe more colors. Like it was, it's, it's incredible, but it, but it was familiar. It's like, okay, that's a tree, that's a hill, that's a river, you know, but all of it just shh, crystal, just made of crystal. Um, that's really pleasant. I'm enjoying that. But, but what I want to know and what, I, what I'm seeking is, is Dave okay? Where is mm. Dave and is he okay? And I'm asking... Where's Dave? Is he okay? Where's Dave? Is he okay? Where's Dave? And eventually something answered, a consciousness answered, and it said, what's a Dave? And, and so that was a startling. <laughs> <laughs> what's a Dave? What's a Dave? Yeah. And, it, and so I, I was then able to journey on what's a Dave and learn, well, what's a Dave biologically? What's a Dave spiritually? What's a Dave in, in, you know, an experience and history, right? And and um, so I brought that back. I felt like I brought it back, almost like homework, you know. And this is a Dave. And then and then I rem I don't remember the questions, but I was asking a lot of questions, and and they kept getting slammed over the net so hard that I would laugh. I was just like, the universe is so funny. I was calling this the universe. This, and it was. I'd ask something and it would just slam. I call them Zen zingers. Like they were just, <laughs> they were so true and they were so duh. And it went on like that until it forced me. I was like out of things to ask, it felt like. And I said, okay, then, you know, when is Dave? And, and it, it was, it was very much the feeling like that's a good fucking question. Right. Oh wow! You find that's the good. That's a good right question. question. And all the landscapes that I've been mm -hmm. like moving through just started speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, speeding. And then they folded, and mm. it just went like this. It was like a roller coaster ride, you know. And then just down, down, down. And there's no up and down, but but it felt like down, 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 down. And then boom, out on what I was told, and I understood as this infinite plane of souls. Right, and the wheels of life, the sort of Buddha vision of the wheel of life and death. These wheels were churning through the plane of souls, and the whole thing was the size of the universe. It was enormous. Now I don't think this is a real place anymore. At the time, if you ask me, I'm like, oh, I went to this. Felt real. Yeah, it's a. It was a. It was a creation to understand mm -hmm. a teaching. That's how I would. That's how I see I it can now. See that. Yeah. But it's enormous, and, and my first thought is, no wonder Buddha wanted off this ride, because it's just, and all of the, they were sort of concentric rings of, they weren't flaming, but they felt like they were flaming, and, and they were picking up lives, and then the life would go through its cycle, and then they were gray on one side, and they were all these different colored tiles on the other side, is what it, sort of like these glass luminescent tiles moving through the other side, and I was shown Dave's life. It's like, this is, this is the win of Dave. Mm. And everything that has ever happened in that win still exists in an infinite now. Mm -hmm. You, I couldn't visit it in my physical self as I am sure. now, but none of it, it all persists. But the, but the spirit that is Dave won't do Dave again. 
This is what was communicated. Also, the other thing that was really interesting about that teaching was Dave died, to me, Dave died too early, you know. He, he, he died in, in his mid-50s, and to me that was too early. Mm -hmm. um, but all lives were the same size. The baby that died in childbirth was the same size life as the, because all lives are complete. That was the, that was the sort of teaching that went with that. All lives are complete. Um, so, I get that teaching, and I'm like, okay, this is amazing. I'm going to go back and <laughs> talk to the shaman about what's up over here. And, 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 I, and I come out, and, <clears throat> and uh, I, am, I am physically, if there is a, if there is a body, which the, there, there is in some ways, I am d different. So on this side of the journey, I couldn't talk about Dave without crying. Mm -hmm. And this is probably 20 minutes later, and I'm healed. You healed? All the way through. And, and I used to say it was a cellular, that it was every mm -hmm. cell. I could feel every cell of my body, because you're in truth, learning about truth. And, and so as you learned, in, and you have that kind of knowing, capital K knowing, Everything gets rewritten, and I think what's happening is your DNA. They they say ninety seven percent of our DNA is junk DNA. There's no way that nature deals in that much junk, right? Yeah. But it's but that the three percent writes what you look like, and you know um, what diseases you might mm -hmm. be um, might have in life, and et cetera, et cetera. The the other the other um, ninety seven percent is constantly changing, mm -hmm. and what they call upgrading. Now then, I would call it upgrading. So I think it. I think what it really is is that is that is sort of that is um, a that is a storage of where you are in consciousness as it's integrated with the body, the the interface between those two things. That was totally different in twenty minutes, and it has never snapped back. It's not. It, yeah, there's I could, no way back. Well, I think I could make some wrong decisions because that's how we get here: is we make wrong understandings about the the illusion, and then we make wrong de decisions and understandings. I think I could go backwards. You can certainly go backwards and away from source, um, but it's but it doesn't feel likely, and and uh, and um, and I'm sure that that. That understanding is, has been, so now I think I'd love to take that next part, the integration, right? Yeah, so you do two days journey, by the way. This was a two day process. Yeah. You are a completely different person. You are healed. And like you say, you, you, your perceptions have changed. So then what? What did the integration look like? So yeah, it was two days. I'll go back to the second day, but one thing about integration for, for me, um, I don't know why, but I, I never in my life have I been drawn to Hindu text, mm -hmm. but that's all I wanted to seek. I'm like, what is the oldest Hindu text that I can find? And I just did research on what that would be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the Gita, I, I got the Upanishads, I've read them, they're not as relevant for me. But, but the Gita mm -hmm. was, was, it was kind of, it, it's such, it, it, how do I put it? In the same way meditation turned into candy, the Gita was like candy. Like it was very, very accessible. It felt like reading about two contemporary people. One is a chariot driver and one is a, you know, a prince, but, but it didn't feel like that. It felt very much like like people I knew, and it read just like a, like a, uh, And the Gita, just for the book. listeners who are not uh, aware, it's the story about Krishna, is that correct? It's Krishna is, is yeah, is, is the chariot That's, driver, yeah. and, um, but what I think, but what I think is relevant, ultimately, like now, knowing why, mm -hmm. right, this is a, this is a, um, a non-dualistic teaching, Yep. right? And so dualism being there's us and there's God, right? And non-dualism saying that yeah. in the end, it all is part of one infinite consciousness. This is said many, many different ways and many yes. different teachings, but there are dualist teachings that say the two are separate. Mm -hmm. This 
is interesting that this is what I gravitated towards because everything I learned in medicine was was very non-dual. It was so. This, is it correct to say that a lot of aspects of religion is dualism? Because a lot of us, a lot of people, still have this aversion, this feeling of separation of God because they learned that God was this figure that would punish us, that was watching our sins, that we had to be the good girl, the good boy. So is it correct to say that a lot of the religions, especially Christianity, the, or even some Hindu or, yeah, or no, yeah. Buddhism, I mean, everything can be twisted and distorted. But is that what would be considered dualistic teaching? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 um, that, that spirit is separate than the physical is another way to look at it. Right. With a, with a, with a non-dual teaching, spirit is the primal reality mm -hmm. which gives birth to the physical. Yes. As well. So anything that splits into two, anything with, with the, that creates a, a notion of, of separate mm -hmm. would, be a, would be a dualistic teaching. Yes. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, it was weird for me to wind up here because I'd never given a shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, this stack, by the way, this is sort of the order of what I call breadcrumbs, you know. If you honor the experience of the journey, I think everyone's going to be different. But for me, it felt like brushing my teeth when I had to meditate. And I didn't have to meditate, but when I chose to meditate, it wasn't that easy. But coming out of the medicine, man, so easy to move into that, that quiet space. And you wanted to meditate. I would meditated two or three times a day. Yes, because you want to connect with the energy. And I felt like, I felt like you don't know where you are. And one of the neat I, things about a journey is you, and it, they're all different. I've had friends' journeys who they'll meet uh, a spirit guide yep. or three spirit guides or... Um, or their grandmothers or their grandfathers. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be different for everybody. It's going to be different. I felt really um, excited about my journey because uh, it also gave me a very good sense of where I was. And, you know, I had that experience where I'm like, no wonder Buddha wanted on this, off this ride. Pretty soon, I'm, I'm feeling like I want off this ride too. Um, and now that I've seen where I am, I can do it. Like this, this could be it. I can be done. Off the ride, meaning I could die right now because that would be amazing. Like, oh, well, you... that, okay, that brings up, a, no, of the, I don't want to go through the cycle of life and birth again. Or birth and birth, gotcha. and, birth and death. I, I, I don't I don't want okay. to come back. Just to clarify, yeah. I would I would be I would be very pleased to be done with this particular sphere. I'm with you on that. <laughs> okay, and and then you know you just get a sense of like okay, well I'm I'm actually close to, mm -hmm. I can I can pull that off yeah. if I dedicate myself. I can pull that off. Yes. So so that that was one of the aspects of the of the breadcrumbs that was that was exciting. Then. Um, wait, what were you just asking? Because I want to go back to that. You said something. You misunderstood. Oh, so we're what talking I said. about um, death, as you were yes. describing. Okay. Thank I, I can just be off this right. I wanted to clarify that you didn't mean off this right. I mean, I'm done. I can just die right now. Well, one of the first experiences was as soon as I was in sort of moved beyond the, the veil, moved to something that I would call on the other side or with, with source, I thought, go ahead and stab me. Because <laughs> this is amazing. And, and, the nirvana. And I didn't want anyone to stab me or anything. Of but, course. But, but, you, but you honestly... You detached. You would not care. And not care because... because, because you are very happy to stay where you're at. Right? You're, you're in truth, learning truth, surrounded by love, and it's an amazing feeling. So, but what's beautiful about what persists is, I, I don't have any fear of death. Like, that, the, the egoic mindset relies on fear of death to some, to some, some to degree. Always now, protect. I have fear of like, you know, how I might die. 
<laughs> but, you know, like... Being a painful dad. Yeah, like I'd rather not have a painful dad. But I don't yes. have any fear of, of finishing um, with, with the body and moving. And so that, that truth of knowing that there's something else, I mean, it is so strong. People don't understand what it feels like. And that's why it's worth, it's worth whatever work you have to do to get over it. Because what comes out on the other side is you, you're not afraid anymore. And you have this foundation under you. You know, I would always do this. Like, this is what it feels like. And it's actually more like this. Well, that's not real brick, is it? Um, it is solid. So your, your existence, your infinite um, life force that, that is part of every, like that is not going anywhere. And once you and once you feel that, and the it becomes, fear dissolves, and you can always go back to that. So which, that's that. Which I want to touch. I want you to describe your second day because I know you had a you had contact with the divine feminine, mm -hmm. and I think that's a pretty important part to share because these days, if you follow a lot of spiritual teachers and coaches on on social media, there's a lot of talk about the divine feminine. So I think that's an important point. With that said, I want us after that to address fear. Okay. Yeah. So talk about the divine feminine. Yeah, the second day, uh, I'll finish up with the first day being one, okay. one thing worth mentioning is I went back to see if I had, you know, I'm still an ego. By the way, when you do these journeys, you are in truth, right? And you're learning truth. But as soon as you're out, you're back with your consciousness. Mm -hmm. And your consciousness is, is, invisibly twisting the messages in a way that matches yes. your egoic self. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's really important to not stop with the journey because only through meditation can you then unwind the rest of that egoic self that is getting in the way of your happiness, that is separate. So the you. ego is not completely dissolved in that experience. No, it's only put to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the ayahuasca, they call it the ego death sometimes. Yeah. But it's not really a death. It's just, you know. It's just in the you, background. And, be and dead you're right. You can get distorted messages yeah. through your journey. What my teacher will call the voice of darkness might speak to you through your journey too. And you have to be really good, like you said, with the meditations to discern what is the voice of truth and what is not truth. Yeah. And also what we, you know, I have, I have. Um, plenty of friends who've, who've done this kind of work and we counsel each other and or anybody new that's doing it don't do anything for at least a month right? don't so, make any life decisions no because you may come out and you're like I need a new partner I, this is my idea for my new career and like you'll have those things yeah. source is not really giving you ideas for careers it's just I not. always say God doesn't give a shit about your career, how really, much money, really, or where you're doing, what it, what are you doing with your free will? You know, really it, doesn't. It doesn't. Really, really doesn't. Not on the not on the level of you know minutia of careers. Correct. Yeah. So, but your ego does, and so your yes. ego will take these teachings and try to apply them to, mm -hmm. to further its own its own you know agenda. Yeah. And it and and persist in its existence. So um, the I was wondering what. My ego was wondering how guilty I should feel about the fact that Dave passed. Did I do something wrong? Mm. Did I ride too fast? Did I give mm. him a heart attack? Did I, you know, did, yes. it, did, did he hit my rear wheel? Did it, you know, all these, like, what happened, right? And so I'm journeying on that. You get, you know, it, it, first day it was a real process. It took a little while to get there, and then it always took a little while to get back. And, 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 and I was there and I was asking those questions and it, no matter how many different ways I tried to ask it or, you know, I wasn't satisfied with the answer, but the answer was fate and free will, both. Fate and free will, both. And then I tried to ask another way, fate and free will, both. So finally, I'm, I realized, okay, I'm not getting anything else. The, the both is actually pretty healing. The fate and free will, I was like, whatever. <laughs> but I started to go back with the idea of both because it solved a, a, a duality that, mm -hmm. that, that was an issue for me, a perception of a duality, um, which was, did Dave die? I mean, he, we, we, rode our, we were riding our favorite trail that we'd ridden for years, and we'd ridden together our whole lives, and, and 
this trail, my son had named these three jumps, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I could hear him behind me, and he was riding, I could just tell by the sound of his tires, he was riding perfectly. And then we finished the Holy Ghost. Two turns later, I turn around and he's not there. I go to give him a high five, basically, and he's gone. And so is that, I mean, it's kind of epic. It's kind of like a Viking death, you know? It's like... It is, and this, and, and this but synchronous of your son naming right. those particular hills. The father's son. The name. father's son. I, it, and then there's it, no coincidence there. It, so that part is like, God, and then he dies in my arms, and like, what if I could ride the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost and die in his arms, right? That's, it's kind of beautiful. Yeah. But it's the worst thing that's happened to me. You know, like it's, so which is it? I was like, which is it? You know? Grace, as Ram Dass would say, there's grace in suffering. That's what makes me think in that process. It was one of the worst things that could happen in your life, that happened in your life. And at the same time, you have found so much grace in this process. Well, the ego is born of the idea of separation, right? And the yes. idea of separation creates the idea of dualities, right? There's always going to be good, bad, hot, cold, yes. you know. This was terrible. Yeah, mean, nice, right? And so those, those dualities are, are, are what, it, what, it, what it, it's stock and trade. And so I wanted to know which one was it, was, was it, was it epic and, and a beautiful perfect death or was it the worst thing that's ever happened and both like the word that came through that healed me was both and it truly is both in the in the source consciousness right that has the perspective of all things ever it is both it, it truly is in in my physical world I have a hard time seeing that all the time but but that's the truth of it. So, so those all those dualities are healed mm -hmm. in the in in truth in source, um, and uh, so I started to come back with this idea of both, and then I realized, oh, there was something else, wasn't there? And, and it's just funny because you're it, there really is this trudging, like you're psychically trudging, and then I'm like, oh no, and then I went back and and I I was back, whatever that means, and then I'm like. Where is it? I can't find it. What was that? You know, and, and the voice is like, calm down. You'll remember, right? And then, it, uh, oh, fate and free will. Okay, fate and free will both. And then I took that back to, uh, to the shaman. Later, you know, in the work, in the integration, um, fate and free will were huge. At the time, I was ready to leave them behind, but part of me knew, go get that, you know. Um, then the second day. So those are the highlights of the first day. But there's a month of things happening within, within 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the second day, it was supposed to be integration of the first day, and it just didn't turn out like that for me. Um, I, was, I had also had, my mom died, my brother died, essentially. Um, and I had a pretty bad crash where I, I got concussed enough that I couldn't remember, like, mm. my my friends' names, and mm -hmm. so I'd lost um, short-term memory, but also long-term memory. Wow. Um, and kind of jacked up my neck. So these things were like, in my, they were sort of one psychic knot that seemed somehow related. I didn't understand how and why, but so the second day I was trying to heal, um, integrate and then heal physically my injury, right? And I'm doing those healings and it's, um, I've sort of seen that energy from the first day and understanding some energies that were that I was holding on to, right? Because energy has to flow. Mm -hmm. if, if you ever grab it and try to keep it from flowing, that creates illness and mm -hmm. sickness and stuff. I didn't know that. It's just me. Now I kind of like have read that kind of stuff. And like, but at the time, I'm just like, all right. Like I grab some energy. I'm holding it in here, letting that go. And then this other consciousness just flows in like this. Like, I, to me, out of nowhere. I didn't have a question for it. I was just trying to heal. And, and this consciousness is the most feminine, loving experience by thousands. Mm. Incredible. And it just says, welcome back. 
<laughs> and I just lost it. I was just in just so oh, powerful. Waterworks. Welcome back. Now, most of my life, you actually ask if I felt spiritual. Most of my life, I felt like I had a really c good connection to what I called the universe, mm -hmm. where if I ever had any issues with work or, you know, I used it very practically. I would just go to sleep and I would, I would plug in and I, yep. would, I would get the answers. I'd wake up with answers. Yep. That, that had gone away somewhere in my mom dying, mm -hmm. the crash, and, and, and Dave. I think it happened with, with my mom. I think that I had said So the way you disconnected from source. I was, I was so mad at my mom for passing, I think, in some level, mm -hmm. that I disconnected from that aspect of mm -hmm. the divine feminine. And so it turned back on. Mm. And she... I wouldn't have described the first consciousness as masculine until I felt the second one. Yes. And, and, and she just, it was like boot camp, spiritual boot camp, like here we go. And she took me all around, showed me how this biology worked, this physiology worked, this, how this, how the planet works, how the, how women who, you know, become pregnant, how that works, how the decisions that women make, how she flows into all women and the moment that they become pregnant, like she flows in in another way to become, because she is what I call the great mother, right? So, I mean, it was like teaching after teaching. It was so much. She took me to the astral plane and she's like, here are five beings on the astral plane. And I saw two things that kind of look like aliens and then three things that were made of light in different ways. And, and uh, I was like, I want to talk to you, you know? No, <laughs> you know? we don't no. have time. No. <laughs> Let's I, go. Like, wait, there are things that you want out of your journey. Like, like it would be really fun for me to meet an alien on my journey. Are yeah. we good on time? We are on. so good. Okay. Yeah. Just want to make sure we can And, and uh, but, but I call it tender for spirituality. Like, you're going to get <laughs> put up against what you need, not what you think you want. Mm -hmm. And so... She does this like spiritual boot camp for me, and you know she starts giving me armor. Now it's spiritual armor. She she's she's like welcome back warrior. You know like I've been some sort of this that stuff goes into the egoic for me a little bit too. So not not that important, but but you know I've had a relationship prior. It was deeper in other potential lives what you know I don't necessarily believe in past lives or not believe in past lives I believe consciousness uses that idea sometimes right you don't believe in past lives I don't not believe them in, in and I don't believe in gotcha them. yeah so it, it they are true but at only a certain level and then they become not true if that makes any kind of yeah. sense okay so um, anyway it's an incredible experience at one point I'm laying back and I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm tuning your antenna. And it felt like a hair petting. It was like getting a hair petting from a goddess, you know, like, it was incredible. And, and uh, I don't know what tuning the antenna was, but I'm like, I think I, my, my antenna got turned on yesterday and now she's doing this thing. The biggest, the, the, the teachings were incredible, but in some ways, the best part of that second day was I had nothing in my understanding of the universe that made a space for this masculine figure and this feminine figure. So it was so outside of how I would have conceived mm -hmm. of uh, this, this spiritual realm that in, in great ways it just threw all the pieces up again, right? Whereas the first day didn't differ from my Boulder Buddhist mm -hmm. point of view, the second day did not fit. Now, I started trying to figure out who works for who, who came first, you know, did she make him, did he make her? Now I know that that is like nonsense. Like these are different aspects of one thing. They intellect trying to understand. Right, right. Yes. And, and... Maybe on some level you could decide you could understand things that way, but um, it totally unimportant and yes. and and uh, and the way I um, understand it now is it's different aspects of an infinite consciousness. Of course, it can come forward with this divine feminine. I mean, she she told me things about abortion and like how it's a woman's decision 
as a mother, it's the first decision that she makes as a mother is whether to keep the baby or not keep the baby. Because to keep a baby in the wrong situations is not a motherly loving thing to do. Like, wow, like that's I, powerful. I'm not looking for that kind of stuff. I'm not You're there not for asking. that. I'm not there Tell for that. Tell me about abortion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not there for that. But, 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 you know, I'm also... And this message is going to be important even if you have a conversation with one woman that might be exactly. in that place and exactly. you are supposed to be the guide. It, w it was, it came, there's so much coming through and it just came through in the context of how she flows energetically through this sphere, right? So I, you know, she also may be Mother Earth, right? I didn't, I, I can't say. She's the feminine. But she's, she's definitely feminine. And, 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 uh, so, so having, I, I, that part was so important for me because in a lot of ways it, 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 it made me need to do at this point, which has been a year and a half of homework, right? Of meditating at least twice a day, every day. Not like I, you know, only because I'm devoted to it. Right? Yes. And, and then seeking out different teachings. And that's why I bought the stack because this is not something that I would necessarily recommend, but it was interesting to me this morning to sort of like grab the the order of this stack of books. Yeah, if you're on the podcast, I'm gesturing to the stack there of books. There is a stack of books, and I'm going to segue to one particular book. Okay. Because I know you you give this book, like you, you said to me one time that you drive, you know, in your car, there's a, a number of copies of a course in miracles and you give this book to a lot of people you sometimes give this book to a barista in a coffee shop and you go there yeah there was a phase it's sort of i'm and, not doing it anymore for some reason I must, maybe, I, maybe i need to get back i called myself the pied piper or not pied piper, <laughs> i was the johnny appleseed of, of uh of, of that particular book for a while so uh, and and you inspired me to get back to this book because i remember i bought a copy of a course in miracles four years ago and I just put it in, the book sh in my, my shelf and then you and I had coffee about a year ago and you inspired me and I read every single day so why A Course in Miracles? So I'm um, obviously with the Gita this is I'll just mention this one. This one I got into for a little while. This is the Law of One, which I would recommend. It, and I will mention all the books yeah. on the show notes, so the listeners don't have to worry. Because I, ha I have to kind of, I kind of have to say how I got there. So that was a breadcrumb. The, the, the re This is a channeled work of of a of of an entity that calls itself Ra, and it's teaching the Law of One, and it came through some some hippies. Um, I don't know if they're really hippies, but they came through in the late, like, late 70s or early 80s. Many, many sessions that are recorded of this woman channeling this consciousness. Now, I would not have been open to that, except that most of the second day, I was, I was talking out loud what I was learning. I think the shaman heard more, probably remembers more of what I experienced than I do. He learned a lot through your experience. He stopped... He stopped and just started asking what was coming through me questions, his own questions with yes. his own life. Because he's like, I got something good on the line. Like, I got some issues, <laughs> right? And so this teaching, I was hearing it. Then I was, then I was off on my journey somewhere. Now, this is all happening in my consciousness. I'm off somewhere, and I'm hearing him talk to this other, to her, to the great mother, and, and I'm like, oh my God, are they still talking about this? Um, and I would kind of in consciousness, I'd go back to the conversation, I'd leave it again, and I'd go back and leave it again. And, and finally, as the medicine was wearing off, I was sort of sucked back in, and then I was trying to answer his questions. And I don't think my answers were nearly as good as, as, the, as her answers. Um, but having essentially ha experienced something channel mm -hmm. through, through, through me, um, 
I was open to the idea of channeling. So, so this one is, it's kind of wacky, I have to say, but on tape, it's a lot of fun. The okay. law of one. That, um, being open to channeling, I was watching a YouTube video and they were interviewing um, Paul Selig. Paul Selig. Who started channeling in the interview. And the minute he did, I was like, that's real. Yeah. It just felt, you know, your intuition changes, by the way. Like, you yes. do a journey and your intuition sharpens in some way where you really trust it. And so I was like, okay, that that's for real. What did he write? And I just happened to, I think this might be, that's I don't his know. first book. Is it? Okay. It is his first book. So, so it's called I Am the Word by um, Paul Selig. This book is a lot of fun. I recommend it to a lot of friends as a way to sort of open up mm -hmm. to what he channels, which is what he calls a Christed energy. So in this book, what, what I enjoyed about it was you hardly have to pay attention to what you're reading. Like, you, you just feel. You just I, feel it. I shared that with you because I'm currently reading that book and I can literally read the words and feel the energy shift in my body. Yeah. So I agree with you. There's, there's truth in his channeling. Yeah. You just tingle. Like I yep. tingle mm -hmm. in lots of different yep. places. Sometimes you know? top yeah. of the head yeah. or the Sometimes arms. The, yeah. Yep. This book just makes you tingle. And, 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 and so I really, I'll often recommend this before I'll recommend A Course in Miracles just as a way to open. I, think it just I would agree with you. It's an easy read. What I love about Paul Selig, it, 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 anybody can understand. It doesn't matter where you are in your journey, yeah. how many books you read, if you've done any psychedelic journey or not. doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Versus A Course in Miracles, it, it, it's a much deeper, it's like almost like a text. Course in Miracles, my friend describes it as the punk rock of spirituality. Like it's like hard. It. Yeah, I like it's it too. hard. You can probably tell I'm kind of intense in some so am I. way. <laughs> That's all <Yeah>. my friends. <laughs> and, and, and I think that the intensity of this for me probably works. Yep. But for some people, it, it, it wouldn't. Um, so you want to, um, what? Should I talk about Course in Miracles? Yeah, now? talk about Course in Miracles. Or how as, I got there. And yeah. How you got there. And as, again, it might not be a book for you, for everybody. Uh, it's not an easy reading. No, it's not. But it, I don't think that... I don't think it matters whether you feel like you're getting it. I think it's, it, it's like meditation that way, right? This book will do its work. Um, by just you reading. Just keep going. Mm -hmm. Just keep going. Don't give up. I was reading um, Transcending the Levels of Consciousness, which Dr. is one Dave of my Hawkins. David yep. Hawkins. Yeah, mm -hmm. one of my favorite books. He's he's passed now, yep. but um, incredible. What he did is he he took consciousness and created this numerical scale mm -hmm. and gives all sorts of thoughts and tips and stuff. And I think he was very high on that scale and gives a, a lot of actionable ideas on how you move um, up in consciousness. If, if, you, if you, you want a more to. science, that's a great place to start. He wrote a very, his most famous book, I believe, it's Power Versus Force. Yes, I haven't read that one because I don't care about power or force. Yes, <laughs> but for the listeners, they might know David Hawkins by Power Versus Force. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so in this book, he mentions A Course in Miracles. Yes. Um, and, and he rates the Course in Miracles in, on a level of consciousness, and I don't know why, it jumped off the page to me one morning. Mm -hmm. I thought for sure I was going to sign up, I was going to pay $2,000 for this, um, I think it was like $2,000 for this remote viewing Monroe Institute course in wow. meditation. Do you, okay. Have you ever heard of any of yeah. that stuff? This is basically what the CIA used to remote view. Okay. So I've done, I, I, I've done, I don't know if I call it remote viewing. I can do by location. Mm -hmm. Like I went to a friend's house and it was pretty fun. I, I seemed to fly, he was in, in uh, Denmark and, and I found his place and I found him and I, and then I described his house in a text and he's like, what do you mean you were by? And I'm like, and he since I'm like, do you have a white house with a with a with a red tile roof and a little garden box out the window and and, and books shelves behind your? And he's like, yes. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? And he sh sends me pictures. And and it I said, it was the house. It was the house. And, yep. I, and, 
And I said, yeah, I, I just, I, I kind of was, did a little visit, this, you know, sort of psychic visit. And um, later we did a, did a, a Zoom call and there were the bookshelves. And I said, if you turn the camera around, is there a window here? Mm -hmm. And because this is the one, and he turned it around. I'm like, that's, yeah, that's the big window I came yeah. through. I stopped by. <laughs> yeah. Um, these are implica these are things that just happen as you move into a oneness of consciousness because obviously it, within one consciousness everything would be accessible like that. Party favors, party tricks, I don't really care that much about them but I was gonna delve further into that whole kind of world because it was interesting at the time. This, the words A Course in Miracles came through and this other book I was reading and, and I ordered it. I did a little bit of research and then I ordered it on Amazon. It came, you know Amazon, it came like the next day. Yeah. I cracked it open and I, I found that I was, it starts pretty good um, right away. And I found that I was looking, I just looked at my hand and I was like stroking the pages, like petting the book. I'm like, what are you doing? Amazing. Uh, and, <laughs> And, and I'm I, loving the book. I'm loving the book, yeah. And then, and then I, and then I realized that in my consciousness, I had already decided that I would read it five times during the rest of this lifetime, and that yeah, I'm really worried about the fifth time. I know it's getting close when I'm <laughs> on my fifth reading. I'll probably slow down. Um, and uh, and and I uh, um, and I was very devoted to it very quickly. And when I went to dog ear the page, which I mutilate books, I don't care about books, right? Not They're, this one. No. Yeah. I couldn't bend the page. I, I wanted to save my place. I've never had a book a bookmark in my life, right? And you can see there's three bookmarks going yep. in this thing right now. So, um, never had that kind of reaction to any kind of book or any kind of teaching. Is it, should we go into the background of this book? Let's go a little bit. For those to? that are interested, we're not, we, we, we're gonna probably do an entire episode about A Course in Miracles. So maybe just mention how, you know, the book was created. Well, I'll, you know, th this, this uh, I'm holding up another book called Who Am I? by uh, Ramana Maharshi. This book, is we just counted the pages. It's 16 pages, a pretty big Maybe type. Start there. <laughs> yeah, everything, everything in A Course in Miracles is actually contained in this other 16 pages, in my opinion. But I could never gain what I gained from A Course in Miracles from this other book. Now, if I had the chance to sit at his feet every day, yes, and talk to him yeah. for 365 mm -hmm. days then I'm sure that I could. To me, that's what this book also felt like very much. That was, this is finally my chance to sit at the feet of a master because I've never had that chance. Right. I knew my whole life, if you, some part of me knew my whole life, if I encountered the right master, I would drop everything mm. and I would sit at their feet. And suddenly this, like Ram Dass did. Like Ram Dass did. He like, walked away from Harvard, from everything. I, like the Beatles almost did. <laughs> yes, almost did. <laughs> yeah. But maybe not the right teacher. You know? Correct. Um, so, so, I, so I really felt that. This, this um, the other thing worth mentioning that, that really appealed to me is it's called a course because it literally has 365 days of lessons. And I need that discipline, I think. Yes. And to, to come back, you know, because I'm not going to get it on the first day. I just, no. I just know myself well enough and I just don't think I will. And so to come back the next day and like, here it is again, yep. here it is again. And people complain that the course is redundant. It's like, it's not really, it's, no. it's, it's coming at the same ideas from hundreds of different angles and it will, it will dissolve your ego if you let it. This is battery acid for, for the ego mind. For those who don't want to do a psychedelic journey and you want to dedicate, devote. Yeah. And I don't know, you know, I don't know where to put psychedelic journey in importance. I was thinking about that, like where, you know, people would love to know what proportion of this 
So, by the way, I should just say, my happiness now is like a, you know, I, I don't even think it fits on the sca same scale. No. I like to say it's a 9.8, but I know that's not true anymore. I was anymore. just going to say it's 9.8. It's not even, it's, it's not even like that, though. It just, it's, it sits, like, in this peace, love, and happiness are all one thing that are just set on different temperatures. So, we're going to wrap it up this part one here, oh, well. because it will be part two, by just maybe sharing with the listeners um, a little practice. Just like, they're not ready to read any book yet. They're not ready to go in and find a shaman and do a psychedelic journey. Just like in the comfort of your home if you wanted to start connecting with truth what would be a, a, a good start because on part two we're gonna st we're gonna talk about happiness we're gonna talk about fear we're gonna talk about this illusion of control we want to bring all this together into more practical like how do we bring this to everyday life and what are what is what we call illusion so just share like a little little prize that somebody can maybe start connect with truth. Yeah, it's really hard because everyone's in a different place. Yeah. So so two things come to mind. Yeah. Right. One that's really important and it's connected. It's connected to to probably both both practices. What you what you consume mentally is really important, and if you don't want to go anywhere spiritually you need to get on Instagram right? <laughs> here we're gonna switch this interview to what you need to do in order to make sure you have to no live an illusion and live with a lot of fear and walk away from any spiritual life here we go <laughs> I think you want to like get a big dose of news every morning yes please yeah. one hour at least start it it should be the way you start your day <laughs> First thing. First thing. In it, fact, you should brush your teeth with the news channel already. Yes, yes, yeah. I think both Instagram and Facebook. You could do them both. It's even better. Together. If you do either one, I think you're 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 not going to go anywhere. So that's good. Yeah. Yes. Um, it and uh, so you you really I think if you if you wanted to to just make movement instantly, you would just turn those things off. Amazing, right. amazing advice. And then, and then take that time, which is significant. You can look at your your phone; will tell you how much time. Yes. So now you suddenly have two hours mm -hmm. that you didn't have. Let's say that you're really don't uh, not on those things, and so you're only on them an hour a day. I think most people are on them more. More, but let's be gentle and say an hour. Let's say an hour. Let's say an hour. So now you have an hour you didn't have. Mm -hmm. So. The, I think the, the, the thing to do is when you wake up, you want, to, you want first thing to go into a place where you feel comfortable, you can be comfortable, you can sit comfortably in a chair. You don't have to be cross-legged. You, your feet could be on the floor. You can be cross-legged. You, you could lay down if you wanted to, but you don't want to fall asleep. Yes. And so in, that, in, the, in the, you know, those morning hours where now you're awake and you're not going to go back to sleep, take some teaching. And I don't think it matters that much what it is. Right? No. Um, but and you're into it. Let your intuition be your guide. Pick a teaching, and then drop that teaching into that hour. And it could even be a half an hour. That'd be plenty. Read a little something, and then don't even meditate. Contemplate. The we don't talk about contemplation, but contemplation is one aspect of of spiritual journey that's huge taking really beautiful truths and dropping them into a somewhat quiet mind and just turning them over gently for a period of time. Close your eyes because your eyes are, are, are mostly giving you an illusion. Mm -hmm. So as you close your eyes, you shut off a, a, a large portion of, of what you misunderstand mm -hmm. and then just sit with those teachings. I think if you, if you start there, it's going to, like, the breadcrumbs will stop, I love start that. dropping. I, I love that you said contemplation because meditation is, everybody talks about meditation and 
a lot of people have aversion to meditation because there's this idea that you should empty your mind, which is not, we'll talk about that in another podcast. A contemplation, I think, is a great place to start. Like you said, read a page of one of these books or any book, any mm-hmm. teachings that speaks to you. And don't read like a novel. Just read a page and sit yeah. with those words and just feel those words in your body. Do they resonate truth? Do and they forget make it, you and, curious? And forget them and have to read them again. Like what, <laughs> Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. That's a great place to start. So... Thank you. This thank you. it's a good place for us to stop in part one. And part Should we just two keep going though for real? We're just right yeah. after. Do I have to come back or could we just do part two right now? We're just gonna do part All two right, right now. Okay. So for the listeners, it's a good place for you to pause and go on your day or you know, just go take a, a quick coffee break and come back to part two. Thank yeah, you everybody. We'll, we'll take a coffee break too. Well thank you everybody. All right, Alex. We're back. Another coffee. We're filled up. We filled up with a lot of caffeine for our second part. Mm. So I am assuming our listeners or viewers have watched the first part where you share about your psychedelic journey, your healing, um, how you got disconnected from source through the loss of your mother, then the loss of your best friend, and that journey changed you. So what I'm curious about is where fear comes in. Because in my understanding, the root of suffering is the separation, how we feel separated, how we can say they versus us, or even the separation from God, from source. And in this kind of biological brain that we have and in a sense we are wired for fear we wire to to fear that's what a lot of science tells us and I used to believe that yeah we need to have a sense of fear and I don't believe that anymore because Mm. that part of the brain that is going to warn us if there's a fire in this building it's going to kick in that's always with us yeah and yet a lot of people believe that you need to have fear in order to protect yourself. Which leads me to say there's this illusion that a lot of people live in of creating safety. People work mm. very hard to make a lot of money so they can be safe. Or they will get into relationships with the belief they will feel safe. So there's this illusion of wanting to control. A lot of these people are my clients because this need to control, there's a name for that. It's called, in our society, we call anxiety. And it can be so out of control that a lot of people need to medicate. And what anxiety, my understanding of anxiety is, is this constant need to control the environment to prevent uncertainty which is a very interesting model because we can prevent that but for the small self the egoic mind that the ego always wants to control so this is kind of a long question about how do we help people that live in constant anxiety have this this need to control and here we are talking about always an illusion Yeah. Where this illusion you need to control and fear it doesn't comes feel in. like an illusion. Doesn't feel like an illusion, right? We can say it's all illusion. This is the matrix. It's a virtual reality in a way, but here it is. It's solid, and so take take from there. Don't step in front of the illusion bus. <laughs> it's yeah. <laughs> gonna Don't, kill, exactly. It's gonna, gonna kill you. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the question is. I could start a lot okay, of Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna summarize. Yeah. Why it will serve our highest to let go fear? Well, my, my, uh, where, where I've, um, gotten to on this question of fear is I had the exact same point of view as obviously if you grow up in this culture, you're going to have the cultural understanding 
of most everything. You're, you're being taught constantly mm -hmm. the, about your separate self. Um, and so I really valued fear. I talked a lot about how it was such a great motivator, and it, mm -hmm. and it was, in many ways, it did motivate me, or seemed to motivate me. But it, but it motivated me to do things that didn't lead anywhere. Mm. You know, everything that it motivated me to do just strengthened that ego self. Um, and you mentioned money. I thought at some point, culture taught me, and then I said, yes, that sounds right. Money will make you feel safe if you have enough. And so I got a bunch and I didn't feel safe. So before I could even understand that, I, that it didn't work, I was presented with the idea, oh, you need more money. That was presented by myself, to myself, by the ego self, right? Because it's never enough for the ego. It's never enough. That's why a billionaire can believe they need another billion, right? You can't need another $1,000 million. That's not a need, right? Yes. But, but, it, but it makes total sense when you realize that the safety that, that we all would like to feel isn't addressed through money. Because the two have zero connection. Money and safety, they're not connected. And, and, so, and so, I mean, yes, you need to have a roof over your head, some shelter, some basic things. Survival some survival needs. Some basic things. Yes. Yeah. Um, but those things are being, we, we, we trick ourselves often into thinking those things are not being provided, that it's us against the world. The ego mind wants us to b believe that idea. Um, you know... We get really spiritual really fast if you, if you ask like where fear comes from and how we find ourselves in this situation. Is that okay? Yeah, let's get weird. Okay. Let's get really spiritual. Within, there is only one consciousness. And if you do a journey, if you meditate enough, you will encounter this, right? And you will, it will become more and more real for you and it will become a kind of real that's more primary than what we what real what hindus would call the illusion right mm -hmm. and um the the ego mind is the best way to talk, think of the ego mind is the body mind it's not an inflated sense of self it can be a very deflated sense it can of be self. both inferior and superior and it can be do it at the same time yes. and do it in all sorts of combinations it all, can be filled with shame and be a narcissist at the same time and yep. all it all it cares about is taking every experience and making a decision about those experiences that prove that it's separate from the rest of the world. Yes. That there is no source that it is connected to, that it is just it facing an infinite universe hell-bent on killing it. That is the goal of the, of the, of the body-mind. You can get into a lot of different theories about how that body-mind got created. Let's not go there. We're not going to go there. <laughs> We're not going to go there. But, but Every religion talks about every religion. Every religion and every spiritual teaching will mention something to the effect of um, throwing off the chains. Yes. Right. Freeing yourself from bondage. When you are in the egoic mind, you are bound by this threat of your death that is imminent. Right. And so death has been put on the altar. As the thing to fear. As the thing to fear. Because to you'll avoid. Be, because you're, but, it's, but it's unavoidable because it's coming for you. That's the paradox. But you're going to be obliterated, right? Mm -hmm. And the only way you can be not obliterated is some memory of you may persist. And that's the best you can do with that, with that egoic structure. So um, the, if everything is happening in a consciousness... Um, then that, that idea of separation was an idea within consciousness. Some aspect of an infinite mind thought, hmm, infinite's cool, we've been having fun with infinite, I dig it, right? But like, what about the finite? The finite might There's be no cool. contrast. Yeah, what about the finite? Yeah, I don't even know if it's premeditated. I don't, if, I don't even know if it's like, let's make this <laughs> yes. world. It might be just like, oops, I thought of this world. Yes. So with... You know, within the infinite, 
um, you can't take a slice of the infinite off and have that slice be anything other than infinite. But with the, with the, with the idea of finite, you have to create particles. And so, the, so with that idea and consciousness of the um, finite, something like the Big Bang occurred, if you want to use that model. And particles burst from the quantum, from a quantum field, and spiraled up and tightened up and burst into the scene of the physical. Mm -hmm. um, and those particles then began to organize and over 9 billion years, 12 billion years, what it, you know, it keeps getting longer. But we, um, they became molecules and they became planets and they became um, life forms and they got more and more organized. Mm -hmm. Now, um, within, within uh, the existence on that particle side, on that material side, it's important to continue to propagate the notion of separation. As a species, there's a point where um, this is really like where this, this human body has been perfected. Let's not go into how or what, no. whether it's evolution or whether it's something else. But the, this, this particular human body comes with a kind of bondage that you're sold into through the separation. Mm -hmm. And this particular body, you do not um, have access to the other aspect of what you are. Not naturally, you have to work on it. It's like we, 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 we had amnesia. The moment that we came here, we were born, we forgot all the knowledge. They call it the, the veil. Right? The veil. They yeah. call it the veil. And in our healing process, it's like we're peeling off one veil at a time. And when you do a psychedelic journey, to me, it's like, it's like 20 veils all together. That's why it can feel so big, because it's many veils being unfilled. Un I think lifted, that's right. And, and so the, this biology, <clears throat> We know that, that there's a lot of light, right? We perceive less than 1% of all light through our eyes. But we're taught to believe that we see reality through this 1% sliver. Imagine, you know, 100 and then narrow it down to 1%. 1 That's what we perceive. It's not everything, right? But we operate on the idea that it's everything. And then with each of our senses, they're all very narrow band, by the way. Yes. You know? Each of our senses brings in a sliver of story, and then we, the, the ego mind, the body mind, takes those experiences and then uses those experiences to make a judgment, mm -hmm. um, and the judgment always has to have the same conclusion, which is, I'm separate from you, I'm separate from this, I'm separate from that. And, and the veil is made of a nearly infinite amount of those decisions. Yes. That are happening all the time. Mm -hmm. Each one is imagine like a like a shell being created, layer after layer after layer after layer, until there is there is impenetrable truth to the fact that I am alone in the universe, and there is no there is no source, there is no God, there is nothing but me, and I am the one God of my existence. I somehow created myself <laughs> out of yes, out because of, those veils will nothing. separate us from the truth, which this, the truth is present for all of us, like you said in our first part. There's nothing special about being in this spiritual path. No. Healing is nothing special. It's actually becoming who we truly are, going back to our essence. Nothing special. And these veils keep us away from feeling and seeing the truth. So, so when, you, when you think about particles coming, right, the, in some ways you can think of, the, of what we are individually with the same model. So imagine an infinite, that's very hard to do, none of us can imagine it, so we it's beyond hard. But just, 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 play, imagine, play with it. just imagine a really big cloud yes. of consciousness, right? 
And then imagine a, a um, spiraling down of that consciousness. So it starts off mm -hmm. full and then it, it's like a funnel. It gets tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. That's what we are. That's a great explanation. And, and, and so, so I am one spiral of consciousness who's decided to forget in order to, in, in order to experience this physical world, I've decided to forget the truth of what I am, mm -hmm. right? And you're another. And so at the, if we could go, and we can, but as we move up, you always, people talk about moving up mm -hmm. or expansion. Yep. When, when, you, when you stub your toe, you're taking that spiral and you're making it even tighter. And for a moment, all we that expand exists. and contract. Expand constantly. and contract, by the way. This is not a journey that you're only going to expand because as we expand, then you're going to find another veil. Mm -hmm. And you go through that veil and it dissolves and then you feel this expansion and then there's another veil. So I, yeah. I just mentioned this because a lot of people in this path, including me, it's so easy to get attached because again, that's our ego or bodies. It's so easy to get attached to this sense of like, I just want to expand, expand, expand. Yeah. And then we get mad. I used to get mad. It's like, oh, I'm having a hard day again. Well, How is that no, possible? No, 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 no. I'm here again healing this insecure, this fear. But that's what happens. That's why I love your illustration of this spiral because this path is not linear. It's, it's, but you never back in the same place either because a lot of people have this feeling like oh, I'm feeling this again I'm walking backwards you're not you are going up but you're going to encounter multiple veils in fact the Sufis believe we have like thousands of veils oh easily thousands. easily but but many of them can be dissolved with like one night with one realization yes so you might go through a whole bunch and yes. and uh, and also, this model of the of the funnel is also a three dimensional model to something that's probably nine dimensions, you know. So, um, not, but it but it works. It works. I, I think another way to look at it is that that I like to think, and it's very much the same. But if but if you're in in a river and there's a whirlpool, yes, right. The 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 whirlpool is you can point at it. You can say, "There's a whirlpool. There's there's Alex the whirlpool." But you also near the near the edges somewhere it stops being the whirlpool and it's, it's river yeah right you're not separate from the you're river. not no yeah but you still are distinct and so that's the that's the that's the swirling and sort of the the the, the tightening of consciousness mm -hmm. into distinct um aspects of one consciousness so it's a nice way it's a nice way to think it think is. of those things and i think it's close enough to the to the truth that it's actionable when I stub my toe, or the other day I cut the tip of my finger off, you know, and it was, it instantly I went down, 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 you know, and all that existed was like the end of my finger and me trying to get this piece taped back on, you know, um, and it felt terrible. I had been so expanded, you know, like I'd spent <laughs> so much time like expanding and trying to get to that sort of space where it's like, well, where is, where is the edge? Where does it stop being Alex and become river, right? And there you, know, you like, go. You, had, yeah. you need a little accident to and, contract and, and like, go to the whoa. next expansion. <laughs> um, so yes, that, I mean, I, I, I think it's important not to, not to judge yourself because yes. judgment's never good. So, you know, um, judging yourself and, and the, the fact that you expand and contract is, uh, is not helpful. The how do you remove the veil? I think is what almost all spiritual text is dealing with. Would you agree? Yes, which is might be the same question as how we dissolve our fears. It is the exact same question. It's the same question. Because because there's no such thing as fear in my understanding. The, I don't know if this is a good, you mentioned it. So, I mean, if you think about the funnel, right? What, what fear has been, I think I've, I've learned this, but I've also experienced this as fears dissipated. Like what made it go away mm -hmm. has been interesting for me because our, our way of generally 
is you need to face the fear. And I did a lot of this. I would crash my bike. I would, do, you know, now I had to face the fear and I had to go back to that same jump and I had to work my way, right? And you can make progress that way, no doubt. But it's different. It's not like your base level fear gets work, worked out. It's more like I'm able to fix it for this one little vertical issue in my life. The, the other way to address fear is fear, fear is, is not a thing. It is the void of a thing. It's the absence it's of a thing. It's the absence of, of I see as fear, if we call fear darkness. Darkness is not something that really exists because darkness is simply the absence of light. So only light exists. So that's a model that for my intellectual mind. Yeah, I have less <clears throat> understanding of, of that, but, but a good understanding of, of the absence of love is fear. Yes. When there's a void and, the, and there's a void of love, we identify it by, as fear and then we slice it up and use it in all its different, you know, guilt, shame, we'll create separation. anger. Yeah. Any, any of the negative emotions are just different spins on one emotion, which is fear, yes. which doesn't really exist. It's just the absence of love. So um, when you're in the funnel and you're way down here and you've convinced yourself that you're separate, you create a void because you've convinced yourself that you're not connected to love. And now that void gets filled with something. And so the separation and fear go together. The, the knowing yourself is, is separate and alone goes with fear. As you move up the, that funnel that we're talking about and you get into that area where, you know, is this, is this river or is this whirlpool? Is this Alex or is this mm -hmm. source? In, in, that, in that space, there's a knowing yes. of, of what you are. This, is, this, is, this took me by surprise because you just have to experience it but but you are you're made of love mm -hmm. it's what you are mm -hmm. and you're probably light in love to your point but like I'll stick with love at this point yeah and so our search in life and what we're taught culturally is we got to go find love you know <laughs> The Hollywood stories. And it's, and it's like... That once I find the love, I am complete and happy. <laughs> How many people are divorced? How cruel though. Like, it is the only, the only place that love, that you can't find it, is outside of yourself. I had one It would part... be a terrible design. <sighs> Man, it's not cool. It's because not... then that person leaves me, so that's a terrible design. <laughs> well, whether, whether, it's, whether it's just the realization of love, what, any yes. kind of love, whether it's romantic love, any kind of love, if you are going to go look out there, it's the only place it isn't. When, when I, there was one point in my journey where um, I think it was early on and, and, and I got some healing with, with the event with Dave, with Dave's death. And I said to myself, I want to feel again. And light just started shooting mm. out of, of me. There's a kind of medicine they call African heart openers, I think. That's a specific, I don't know what they are. But this is a common experience in those medicines. Um, but it was just shooting out, shooting out, shooting out, shoot, And it went on and on. It was like, whoa. And, and in my mind, I'm thinking, I just said I want to feel again. Why is it going out? Like everything I've been taught is like, I need to get me some love from out there. Because giving is getting. Yeah. Yes. And, and it's what, and, and, and so that giving was, yeah, I mean, you, you nailed it. I was so confused by that. And a lot of people understand <laughs> this already because I always remind people, how do you feel when you give a gift? It's almost like the experience of giving a gift is more visceral than actually receiving a gift. Oh, for sure. So, so a lot of these concepts that might sound but a lot of gifts metaphysical, is... we already have this known, we experience, we just don't pay attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, a lot of gifts don't feel that good to give because they're just an object. But when they're connected to like... Um, our love sentiment yeah. then they then they then they then you are giving a thing that you can give because it is of you yeah. you you can't really give I can give you a book but I can't really give a book because I'm not book you know 
book is an artifact that exists. It's an object, right? But I can, but if I, but if I truly give, I have to give of myself. There's really only one thing I can give of myself, and that's love. So, some gifts are different than others. Yes. Yeah. Because of that truth. Well, and and, and gifts, objects, almost naturally feel sometimes a condition. How many times have you received a gift and you're like, oh my God, I didn't get you anything. It's like we automatically feel the obligation to, oh, I need to give you a book as well. So even that, it's, it's attached to a condition. We can help versus if we just spend time together. Yeah. Supporting each other, listening to each other, or just exchange this kind of conversation, love is exchanging. In that sense, it's not conditional. Because I, I'm not here saying, oh, I, there's nothing my mind is saying that I need to do in that space where love is just exchanged in this most beautiful way, which is I experience as unconditional love. Man, unconditional love is a really good topic. If you want to, one of the things I want to talk about just with, with um, body mind and then higher mind, we haven't talked about higher mind, but, but essentially if you think of that funnel, right, the higher mind is the true self, right? And the mind associated with the true self. On the other end of the spectrum is the body mind, which is the, the mind associated with believing itself only a physical body yes. and the needs of the physical body. Mind is, it, it, in my understanding of it, in my experience with it, mind is not so much a thing, it's not an object, it's, a, it's an activity. And the activity of mind slides along this scale between believing yourself physical and believing the truth of what you are, right? Essentially, or think of it as like fear, the, the mind dedicated to fear and, and with fear on the altar, or the mind with love on the altar, right? And every interaction you have, you get to slide that activity of mind wherever you want. And I think that's all is really happening with the spiritual journey. You're moving that activity of mind little by little further and further up towards the true self in service of the true self. And then when it spends most of its time there, some might call you enlightened or awake or whatever it is, or awakened, like the, those titles I think are really confusing and probably off-putting. It should be off-putting. I think they're people, confusing you know? because yeah. you can have a, a great moment of alignment in your meditation and then you get in your car and somebody cuts you off and you're back into the physical body, you know. And, yeah, and then but, and but you're with... pissed off. So, so and at the same time, we have this ability to touch alignment in those moments like you described when you are in the higher mind and just might be through meditation, you're just feeling that amazing, your heart is open, you just, the thoughts have dropped and you feel that love in your body. That's a moment, in my experience, of enlightenment. Yeah. It doesn't mean I'm going to walk around and say, I'm an enlightened being. No, we all are in that sense. Everyone's the same. Yeah, everyone's the same. It's just how much you're So that's why I think it's so confusing because it's like, like anything the ego wants to run with. That's why we see so much spiritual ego <laughs> happening because the ego can take this teaching and say, I'm going to be the most enlightened person in this room. And, <laughs> and you start reading all the books and you start doing the medicine journeys or you meditate three hours a day and you think you're better than everybody. Boom. <laughs> I'm going to mention Ram Dass again because I love his teachings. He will say, every modality be can become a trap. Mm -hmm. Every modality, medicine journeys, meditation, journaling, reading. My modality was reading. I thought if I read all the books and I'm the smartest one in the room, I get love, I get attention, I get validation. And um, I crashed pretty hard from that one. And I'm glad <laughs> because my ego needed to be crashed in that sense. So, um, Let's talk about the higher mind. Well, I think that what comes up for me is, is there's a lot of teaching out there that just asks you to move into the higher mind, right? Mm -hmm. And like you said, you can, and you can do it 
certainly when it's quiet, certainly when you're not being triggered by anything. Um, but that doesn't really carry much water. Um, because what really matters is, are you able to stay in that space when you're something challenges you? That is where, like, I love this book. Yes. So this is, I'm, I'm tapping on The Course of Miracles if you're listening to the bod- podcast. I, my, my experience as, as trying to understand how to move into that mind, right, as a Buddhist, was to not get attached to things, not, not, not make story about everything, not, right, and, and it's effective. I think there's two, there's more than, there's probably more than two, but, but for me, there's two really great teachers. There's Buddha and there's Christ. Or not Christ, let's call it, call it Jesus, because Christ is, is a little different than Jesus. People don't know that Christ means anointed. They don't know that other people carry the term Christ. Um, because his, he was Jesus Christ, and his performance was really kind of drop the mic, and so for a lot of us in the Western world, we're like, you, you hear Christ, you hear he Jesus. He was the one, yes. yes. Um, but, uh, did he die? At what point did I? I don't know. Mm. It's the beauty of technology. Hello, puppy dog. We've worn out the recording device. How? We did. It lasts probably around two hours. Oh, Jesus. I love Jesus. <laughs> I love Jesus. That's why I, I'm loving the book. I didn't know the word was he'll dive into Christ consciousness. And MDMA to me feels that. It's oh, Christ yeah. consciousness. Yeah. For people who are looking for really gentle ways for journeys, MDMA I think is the best way because it's so gentle. I'll edit this part. So this is the marker for editing. Higher mind. We don't know where we were. Yeah. Okay. But we don't know. So we'll let's just open f- it up on higher mind. Yeah. We um. Let's talk about the higher mind. This this place. Like how how do we integrate? We might have a great meditation with experience, and we're in this place of just feeling so much love. And then yes, you might hit your toe on you know. On, on the, on the wall, or you get in your car and somebody crashes into your car. How how can we be in that space of love, right? When when we get so triggered. How can you be in a space of love when there's so many assholes in the world? <laughs> that's great. I'm gonna just end here. That's it. <laughs> I mean, I think that's most people's question. You know, like it that, is. Um, it is. How can I be in this place of love when? somebody is being so mean to me to me yeah yeah how can i do this how exactly can I do this? so it's a great place to go I, I i feel like there there's been two teachers in the in the last two thousand years that stand out and and one would be jesus and the other would be buddha and for me i was so pissed at jesus for most of my life that the the idea of like coming here and you're a great master. You've got this incredible teaching. Then of you'll love. get crucified. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe that's part of the plan. I'm down with that because I think the resurrection was probably to prove that. Well, you know what? I'm not going to die, and I'm going to prove to you that yeah. you don't have to die. Um, but, but yeah, then we get two thousand years of war and bloodshed and torture and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> much of it in your name, right? <laughs> and and I'm like, come on! Like you had to see that coming. This is my old. Judgment. This is a judgment, right? And it's valid because a lot of people felt that way, and they still do. It. It. And so I was. 
I was pretty down on on that. And then you've got Buddha, and I'm like, okay, well, I don't know as much about all the wars that Buddhists have had. If I did, I might make some of the same judgments because there's been plenty of Buddhists killing Buddhists. Yes. Um, so, but I don't. But I'm less aware of it. I think I'll lean that way. And you know, I did, and I and I read everything I could, and I practiced as much as I could. But what I but what I found was was that when I would go into the world, it was hard yes. to keep my mind my mind um, in service of my higher self, and it would sl it would easily slip in service of some of, of the egoic mind or the egoic self, and so. Um, I guess it was just frustrating, but it was also just not a lot of movement. My happiness didn't move, my, my, uh, my experiences, um, my, my feeling of what the world felt like to me did not move. All of these things have moved since, since I started this course. Now, this course if, is a channeled text by an entity that may or may not be Jesus. You could think of it as Christed energy. You could think of it as Jesus. It doesn't care. It, it would be, doesn't matter. It was it channeled it by. Uh, it was a, a, a consciousness that, for us, when we read, we're talking about a course in miracles. When we read again, it, there's a resonance. Everything is energy for me, and energy doesn't lie. Your mind will lie. Your mind might pick up a yeah. book like a course in miracles, and say, ah. No, I don't believe in any of this. And that's okay if that happens. You, just because you might not be ready for this kind of reading. You might find another teaching that will speak to you. So to me, it's like when I, when I read it, 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 it hits the chord of truth in me. And that's, and that's energy. And again, energy, the energy of love doesn't lie. It's the truth. Yeah. I, and, and, I, and, I, and I think that I... I just have to say, for me, I struggled with that aspect of it, that, that this is supposed to be the same Jesus that I'm already mad at, <laughs> right? And now, but I'm, but I'm being drawn towards it because I'm, I'm re, you know, I'm reading I Am Word and this Christed energy. That's and I'm why like, you were called. Yeah, but it's not, it's not called like this. It's called like my heels are in and I'm like, and I... And I can't believe I'm going here. That's how I feel as I'm moving into this book. I can't believe I'm going here. I love that. Because I have so much baggage with, with maybe even, with, certainly with, the, with Christianity. With Christianity, yes. You know, and, and um, this is not, this is, this is not Christianity. Um, I, I think for some uh, Christians, it would be okay, but I think for many, it would it would be um, uh, what's the what's the term I'm looking for? Um, Heresy. There, thank you. Well, yeah. it would be a problem because for like traditional Christians, they don't believe in channeling. They see channeling as something of the darkness. Well, or medita evil meditation is also or evil. Yeah. So. This book, I remember one time I actually recommend this book to a friend and she said that goes against my beliefs. Yeah. I'm like, really? It's like, yeah, we don't believe in channelers. I'm like, okay, I get it. And meditation. You're not supposed to and meditate meditation. in a, yes. lot of, a lot of Christian faith. You, you don't want to meditate because it allows the devil in. That's right. Um, whatever. I, I'm not, I'm very spiritual, but I'm not aligned with any religion because religion tends to take one person's really wonderful experience and then try to turn it into a dogma that will work for everyone. Same here. I find that that's probably impossible because we all got lost in a slightly different way. So, you know, being rediscovered and re remembering is going to happen differently for everybody. Anyhow, this, here's what really I value about Christ or or Christed energy teachings mm -hmm. versus Buddha teachings, right? Yeah. I think Buddha was pretty meditated about never using the G word. I kind of like that. You, you know, I'm not a big G word person. I've become comfortable with it now. Um, but at the beginning, again, oh my God, this thing has salvation as a word in it, atonement as a word in it, 
Um, God. God is a word in it. And, and I had to replace, I had to, in my mind, I had to cut and replace mm -hmm. all these different words. Yet I was still, I, like you said, I could feel the potential. In yes. it, and I believed in the potential in it. But I had to do all these mental gymnastics to basically take almost, you know, quantum um, um, theory and then apply it to a spiritual place. And the Holy Ghost, okay, that'll be um, dark matter. Yeah. You know? And anymore I don't have to do that, but, but I think it's worth just mentioning because it's not, this is, this is not, I'm not a person that would ever have thought I would find myself here. I guess that's, you know, it's sort of like that interaction with the, what, I, what I later called the Great Mother. Like, I don't know where to put that. I don't know how I find myself here. But now, what I, what I love about this teaching is with, with um, it fundamentally teaches forgiveness. Yes. This is, this is, and, and we don't know how to do forgiveness, and it takes you, uh, it takes me, take me a thousand pages to get good at it. Um, and forgiveness is that way, is, is the, is this teaching's way of allowing you to like undo the veil. The veil comes off, the remembering of what you are, and that moving of your mind in service of the true self, that is a, that is a, a, um, a consequence of forgiveness after forgiveness after forgiveness and doing it properly. Most of my Buddhist friends will complain about the same thing and you mentioned it. I, I, I meditate, I feel good, I'm connected, I know what I am, I go out in the world and I get triggered. In this process, thank you. Because, and because thank you for the triggers exactly, because the saying. trigger shows you the veil. Shows you where you are. <laughs> so now it's it's in this journey. I love trigger. I say thank you for triggering me. Thank you, thank you for showing up in my life and treating me this way. Oh, thank you. You learn how to embrace your triggers because it's the only way we'll know we are hitting a veil. In a in a in a better way to think of the illusion is and they use the term reflection. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I love to think of it as a mirror, right? So if you wake up in the morning and you put on a red hat and you look in the mirror and you're like, I hate this hat. You don't reach into the mirror to try to get the hat off. I love that. But that's how we treat this reality, right? I'm gonna change outside myself. If there were less assholes, I'd be happy. I'll be happy. All I got to do is eliminate the assholes or the asshole behavior or I need to remove all Democrats or I need to remove all Republicans or wherever you are on that, right? And then I would be happy. Well, it's a mirror of what's already happening inside, right? And so um, this teaches you how to use the mirror. And so the bouncing back and forth between your highest mind which might happen in meditation and then moving into the world you get it once you get good at it a little uh, and it happens fast you do some forgiveness and you see it's a very funny thing you forgive someone and then you go see them again in two weeks and you're like oh my god they changed <laughs> okay it's this is a great point for those of you who are right now is stressed out, triggered because the story in your head is your wife or your husband or your partner or your child or the president of the United States or whoever it's causing you unhappiness. And I always say, if you want to see the people close to you to change, change yourself. This is no joke. This is it's crazy. exactly how it happens. The world changes. People, it's not that people are changing. The way you're looking at them is different. And when you see things differently... You'll swear that everybody has changed. So my experience now after doing... I'm only nine days from... I think everybody is, is awakening right now. I see I everybody. It's like I see everybody. It's not anymore... Oh, I'm the awake one. That one is not like it. Everybody is awakening. And, and my, that's a good vibration to be... To move from. And when I bring friends with me to do things, they they always comment like, he was so cool, that guy was so cool, those guys we ran into were so cool, that those people were so cool. And I'm like, 
everyone is sinful. It is a and love affair. Yeah, because life becomes a love because affair. they're getting to tap into like my experience, which I call it heaven on earth, right? Yes. And it's it's it possible. Is. It, it is it heaven really, on earth. It really is. And so now, when things that happen, I like to say, you know, my car breaks down, right? I used to be like, well, let's get ten assistants on that or whatever. You know, I need to outsource this thing that's no fun. Now I'm like. Get to meet a new mechanic. Yes. And lo and behold, they are so cool. What a and, shift. And we wind up texting and friends and whatever. You know me. I'll probably send them a book. Like, uh -huh. um, yeah. But it's but it's incredible. Yes. The, the 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 suffering that the world used to give me, it doesn't give it to me anymore. Now. It's very funny that the first few times you do it, you'll be sure that the other person changed, right? And so yes. the, the, it's, we, forgiveness is the only act within the, within the material world, within the physical world, that doesn't create more of um, the same. Versus an act out of fear creates more fear. Forgiveness stops, stops the branching, stops the- We're gonna go right there. Right now, all right. Because this is this is this topic is very close to my heart right now, which is is why is so important for us to devote to this work of shifting our consciousness from fear to love, because we all in this place that we we want the world to change, we want the wars to end, we want white people to embrace the black people we want to stop the injustice we want to stop people from hurting our planet we want to stop people from hurting each other and yet i see a lot of people getting angry putting all this energy outside to change trying to change people's mind trying to create policies yes those things matter policies rules yes and yet the most important work that each one of us can do right now is to first of all dissolve our own fears our own our own shadow veils whatever you want to call so let's go there because a lot of people have hard time with this concept like how alone can i make a difference in the world you can make a lot of difference in the world by letting go your fear and by operating from this place of the higher mind, as you speak, in a place of love. And it doesn't mean you're just gonna sit on a couch and be in that space of love all day long. It might be for some people, that's why they become monks and that's what they wanna do. They're called to just do that all day long. And I'm glad there are a lot of monks meditating and praying for us right now. Yeah. We need those. Yeah. We also need the, you know, people to be maybe in the government and in the white house make changes from inside out we need those it doesn't matter what you choose to do like you and i were speaking you can just be a barista at starbucks you can make tremendous difference in the world you can choose to be a leader you can choose to get involved in politics you can choose to become a shaman or a healer it doesn't matter it's what is the energy what is the frequency that, what's the information you putting in the world? And I think it's really a time for everybody to start understand. That's my, my wish. People start to understand the power of energy. Yeah, I think that, I think that when you're caught up in, in trying to get other people to act differently. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's never worked. It never works. So, so, so I think that it's, 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 probably makes a certain amount of sense to move past it just because of the fact that it never works. Now, a lot of laws exist um, because those with the higher consciousness mm -hmm. put in place laws that would, that would um, ensure the behavior of those with the lower consciousness, right? So that, it makes sense to have legislation and stuff. Yes. But, but the legislation can't ever um, exist in a place higher than sort of that like mid-level consciousness. There was a time within our consciousness we thought slavery was a valid economic benefit. Correct. Right? You could make a good case for it. And then it was argued back and forth. Now, consciousness today would be like, well, no. 
no, no, no. Like, I couldn't make an economic case for it. Like, listen, we can make a lot more money with slavery. And I mean, that's true, but it's like, but no. Everything, everything significant that has happened to, to our progression has happened through consciousness and raising that consciousness. So if you certainly should vote, you certainly should get, get involved, but, but, if you, um, but if you want to make a great difference, move your consciousness. Yes. It, it, w it will make a huge difference. There's, there's another aspect of this that, that makes a lot of sense as you, as you start to do it. If there is just one consciousness, you can't move any part of it without affecting the other parts of this. This becomes really very visible as you do this work. You see those around you changing um, and lifting. And it's, it, I don't think that it, I don't think that it is, uh, from, from our point of view, that you can do a sort of mathematical analysis of it. But like you said, there are people in, meditating in caves that are providing a stability they for, are. for everyone. They are, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so do, doing, doing that work for yourself and start selfishly, you know? Start, yeah. start just because you want to be happier, but you'll find that like everyone around you begins to be happier um, and, and everyone you run into begins to be happier. It's not hard to even extrapolate the ripples of, of what, what that creates. Yes. Well said. So, yeah. Now, how? Because forgiveness is something that we're taught, and we're taught culturally how to forgive, and it's not forgiveness. It's a different version of hate. What, what we're taught is, you've wronged me, and you truly have, you know. <laughs> it's, it's a fact that you've wronged me. I have a very valid grievance against mm -hmm. you. And, um, you know what? I'm a bigger person than you are. You're a little tiny person, I'm a great I'm big gonna person. I'm going to forgive you. So I'm going to forgive you. <laughs> that's a small mind, by the way. That's that, the that is, that's, that's, egoic, that's the egoic idea of forgiveness. Yes. Um, and, it, and it really is just a it different... It doesn't work. It's a slice of guilt and hate, and, uh, yes. right? Um, true forgiveness, it would be really unlikely that I could explain it here, and people would get a good sense of it. Um, you will learn it over time, and it takes... For some people, I think it would come very naturally, and for others, I think it would take a while. But, but essentially, you, you are acknowledging what, what you are, because you've experienced what you are, and, 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 you've, and you've learned what you are, which is an aspect of a perfect consciousness, right? Experiencing a playground that we're taking way too seriously, mm -hmm. that doesn't actually kill. No one who's come here has ever died. So, so once you have that understanding, then you can go into forgiveness, and there's there's there, there's two parties. There's you and me. You you know you did something I don't like. I did something like who knows, but something happened. Some event happened. Well, you're perfect. Mm -hmm. You're sinless. You're infinite. You're a divine spark. You are perfect. I'm the same thing. <laughs> I'm the same. You thing. are all perfect. And this thing that we think that happened, it only happened in this play. It yes. didn't happen in our native land where we are truly fit from. It only happened in this make-believe. It will go away, like that event, if you do it right, it happens in an instant, and it goes away like one of those sand paintings. You just blow, and it's gone. It's, it's gone. dust. Start with things small, and then work your way up, or start with one that's really big and work your way down. It really doesn't matter. They're all the same, because the function and, and, and what you need to do is the same. I, I've had friends that I've spent a lot of time helping them to try to get it to trigger that first time. And yeah. it's really interesting to, to uh, and they'll say the same thing. It's like, you know, I, I, I'd love to forgive, but I'm so pissed, you know, things like that. Um, and I'd love to forgive, but what they did is unforgivable. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I would say even don't, because I know the word forgiveness pushes some people away because that one never bothered me of all never, the ones. never never bother me either uh, never bother me either maybe because my nature has always been like i want to make peace whatever it takes even when sometimes it costs my own peace i want to make peace so that's always been my nature but it's not for a lot of people 
I think for me the path of forgiveness has been much more about forgiving myself. It's being easier to forgive others. So that's another conversation. But I will well, even I think say it's all, it's all part because it's like, all part. But if yeah. you in this path, you know what else you have you to forgive. You open your heart. Yeah. You know what else you have to forgive. You literally forgive the world. The world. Right. Yes. Because because this world. Hurt me. Yeah, hurt me. Fucking yeah. sucks. Yeah. You know? Mom and dad hurt me, and they're the world, and they were my world. So, yeah. But I would say, in this process, are you really learning how to open your heart? Which you're not going to learn necessarily by reading any book. You're not going to, you can listen to thousands of hours of this kind of conversations, and none of us are going to be able to really teach you how to open your heart, how to surrender, even how to forgive. And with that said, in this process, that you keep expanding, you open your heart, presupposing you have said yes to this path. You have said yes, source, God, light, love. Help me. I want to just feel. I want to really, really embody this. As you open your heart, you cannot help but to forgive. I don't know if that's true for me, but like I, I have to, I have to flip it. I feel, That's how I see it. No, I, I don't disagree because because I, why would I disagree? <laughs> you know, but but I I almost I feel like the you I, forgive and then the heart opens. Totally, oh, and, and yeah. the and the and the veil comes down, the remembering comes up, the love flows in. So, but it's all love, so it doesn't matter because I, yeah. forgiveness is love. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight with you. Open, no, we're not fighting. <laughs> we are green. But uh, the, it's just another way to us. I think it's all semantics. It's just another totally. way to to intellectualize but I in was a way, say, but I was, it's all the same. It's I was, all love. I was going to say, like, try forgiveness even on a whim. Jokingly, try to do it correct. You know, sit down and do it and see if you don't, like, it fires off. And you will lift and you will expand and you will be in a different place on the other side of that forgiveness. So I don't think you... Well, however you need to go into it just to give it a shot like I hate forgiveness but I'm just gonna do one just to prove how dumb it is you're you gonna, know you're gonna be changed there's a story here this reminds me times where I would be driving and I would be cut off by somebody we all have those experiences when that a hole <laughs> cuts us off and we can get angry can get pissed and we can make up all kind of stories and add meaning and spoil your your morning and so what I started doing a few years ago, when somebody did that to me, I was like, before I went to those stories, because I don't know why that person is driving like, like that, like a crazy man anyway, I would say, what if that guy just got a phone call from his wife and she's in the hospital? Why did, if he just got a phone call that his wife wants to get divorced or anything like that? Because I will go to this place of, if I'm going to make up stories anyway, stories that are gonna mm. make me hate this guy I'm gonna then make a story that is about possibilities is it possible that you know there's an emergency and he's driving like this and I will be driving like this as well if he and my friends come and they were in an emergency and that was a moment of forgiveness so mm -hmm. I see what you're saying that I forgive and instead of going to the place of contraction and anger with fear I will relax instantly and keep driving and wouldn't spoil my day at all and if anything I would like I would send love and blessings to that to that crazy driver. I think if you try forgiveness for a little bit. That's a simple way. Try forgiveness for 30 days and if you don't. <laughs> if you don't know, we'll give your money back. I would absolutely give your money back. <laughs> Click yeah. the link below and pay for your forgiveness plan. <laughs> Be because because what happens it gets addictive you know like yes. the, the the your experience with the world changes so dramatically after just a little like bit of it. I, I don't I was not a person that kept a lot of grievances. I didn't think of it as really having much forgiveness to do yeah. but I had some and I still find it and like I, I am overjoyed sometimes now when I find a thing because it's in the cracks now. It's, it's in like, the cracks. It's like I'm in my you know couch in the cushions looking for forgiveness <laughs> now like there's got to be more in here because because the value of it is so great. The value of forgiveness is the remembering of your true self. Not a fake remembering, not a pretending to remember, not a, mmm, I'm vibing. No, like, you're remembering. You become 
that self that you truly are. And it ain't that complicated. It just takes a little bit of work. It and it's a superpower. Work. It takes it's devotion. So this will lead me to the But you can't, get, you can't get triggered when you know what you are. Right? So, I mean, if you do a bunch of this, then you sit in a place, you just aren't triggered because you're not defending an idea of what you are. You're just sitting in what you are, right? And so, you may look in the rearview mirror and a guy's like flipping you off, you know? And you're like... I send kisses now because that happens. Sometimes I get flipped off for absolutely no reason. As far as you know, but you may be coming. But I may be, but I'm going in my way what I think is my right way to go and somebody will come and, and flip the finger and literally now what I do, I blow them kisses and I mean it. I'm not going yeah. to be sarcastic to be just to piss that person off. I'm really doing out of like, wow, I hope you have a better day because I know that person is in a, is in a place of this is a, this is a, and this fear. Is a, this is a Buddhist thing, but I do a similar thing, which is I breathe in oh, whatever the, 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 the bird, the energy of the bird, and then I breathe out butterflies. Oh, I love it. And, you know, because people, in you, every, every aspect of consciousness is an energy conversion machine. So if you, if you... Energy conversion machine. I would translate that into, we're all alchemists. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it in. You're energy lucky enough conversion. to get some energy. Just convert it into what you think you want it to be. Yeah. So this leads me to the closure of our podcast for today, because you and I can talk for eight hours. I know. Um, I'm going to have you back many times. I'm going to stock up on coffee. Yes. And make you many mochas. Remembering, let's just end. Remembering is one of my favorite words now, because I think we are all in this path truly of remembrance like we are remembering who we are so i you know we use this term even on inner child healing i i i do a lot of i have a lot of clients with inner child healing healing the the younger parts of themselves if you will and there is this saying in in a trauma work that that goes like this we all coming back to our essence, to who we were before we got hurt, we got injured, we got offended, we got traumatized by the world. We are born in our essence, so in a way we're walking back and in this spiritual experiences, meditating or through psychedelic journeys or healing with a therapist, we really, when we sit with that feeling, there's for me, this experience, like, ah, oh, this is who I am. We are remembering, and it's a delicious feeling to remember who you are. That, and who you are, is not the marketer, it's not the coach, it's not the guide, it's not the healer, it's not the teacher, it's not the athlete, it's not the biker, it's not the father, it's not the husband, it's none of that. We need those kind of the structures to function this three-dimensional world, but we are remembering who we are. Anything you want to add to that before I ask you my final question? No, I thought that was really, really beautiful. Great. So this is a question that I'll ask all my guests, and I don't prepare them before. Oh no. But it's, 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 especially for you. It's the gotcha. Especially for you is a very simple question because you're already walking in this, this sage, you know, I see you as such a sage now. Um, is your last day in this physical world? Mm -hmm. Woohoo! You have <clears throat> a stage, a camera, and a mic, and you are going to leave humanity. A gift which is one message you can't give ten messages mm -hmm. it's one message what is the message that you would like to to live to humanity before you transition into another dimension it's so hard just take a deep breath 
It's a hard question. You're going to ask everybody this, huh? But everyone will have the advantage of knowing that you asked this. The stuff. funny thing you do is so far it's taking the longest. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, because everybody just snap something like, oh. yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to spoil it. Sure, yeah. But no, it's, no it. it's, you just let your heart speak. Yeah, but I only have one thing. How many words do I have? You can use several words. <laughs> But you can't go into 10 different messages. It's, it's one sentence. It could be also two words. The thing that comes up for me, so it keeps coming up and it doesn't really, I don't, I don't know that it's... Let it come up. Yeah. The thing that keeps coming up is, is essentially to, to ponder unconditional love. That's it. Ponder on... Unconditional, unconditional love. love. Because we because we don't understand mm -mm. we 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 use the term unconditional love, but we've never really thought about what it is. Yeah. Because because we conditional lies we put conditions on love all the time. All the time. And it's the only way that we've learned. We've been taught, you know, and, and one of the one of the conditions um, is that I will love those closest to me more than those that I don't know. And that seems like a very rational condition, but, but it certainly is an unconditional love. Unconditional love would be to love the stranger as much as you love your, your son and daughter. Um, I don't know if that's possible. I do think it's possible. Yeah, we and had this conversation before. I, this... I mean, I, I think it's, I think, well, I, the reason why I think it's possible is because what what we're made of, right, is love. This is this is our our essence. And any time that we're not giving that in full, we're not really being what we are. So um, when you're when you're not being that, even when you're conditionalizing it for someone who's close to you, it's still conditioned. It's conditioned for those close to you. It is conditioned, and you just in this thirty-second process, my mind just changed because uh, you brought me to this place of the higher mind. I love your illustration, the higher mind. In the place of the higher mind, I actually can love the stranger as much as I love you. Mm -hmm. And if I'm in a lower place, which is that place that there's attachment, where, where it creates conditions, mm -hmm. that's the place that I'm, I'm, that I was speaking from the place of illusion. I was speaking from the place of, no, I can't love a stranger as much as I love you. But as you spoke, I, I literally saw myself floating to this wow. place and I heard this voice saying, Alex, you absolutely can. So, um, there's wow. a healing for me right wow. now, so thank you. Is that cool? Wow, it's amazing. It's yeah, amazing. it's just like like that. I don't need to read a book about unconditional love. I don't need to read a course of miracles more. Just in this interaction of you, there's this consciousness literally pulling me up here, like you absolutely can. So thank you for that. I'm I'm speechless now. I was. There's another veil that just lifted. It happens like that mm. when there's connection and love. Love heals everything. Sounds like cliche. Well, it's not. It's the truth. It is love the truth. does heal everything. So. My my son and I were at a skate park. I'll add this, even though it'll probably ruin everything. No. No, um, you're not. You can, my, you, can, my, you can add this and then I'm going to say goodbye. You can, yeah, okay, you can edit it out too. Well, I, I, my son and I were in a skate park and there was a guy there with his girlfriend and he had a strange energy and, and, it, and, it, and I tend to want to interact with everybody Yeah. and I didn't interact with him and we were leaving and we were, we were, we were driving away and I said to my son, you know, did you notice that energy? And he's like, yeah, it was weird. And, and I said, I feel bad that I didn't mm. interact because, and I said, you know, my goal is to really be able to offer unconditional love. And I yes. said, what? And I said to my son, I said, that would mean that someday 
I would love that stranger as much as I love you. Mm. I said, the upside is the amount of love you'd be feeling from me all the time, I don't think you'd miss the idea that you, you That's know. That's beautiful. And, and he said, well, you're on your way, you know, mm. which was an amazing thing to hear. I am not editing this out. <laughs> okay. Because this is a beautiful thing. And I know what you just said will challenge oh, yeah. a lot of a lot of people because you will hit a belief in you that you cannot love anybody more than you love your son. And by the daughter. way, my ex, I I get it. You know how I love my son. I, I do. And yeah. did, but what you just said that by extending the unconditional love to everybody, the amount of love that your son would feel from you will replace everything. It's like... He doesn't he, need an exclusive. It's on, like on, I'm not on outside an, the ocean. Yeah. It's like there's room in the ocean for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Wow, oh, perfect place to end. Very nice. Alex, thank you so thank much. Thank you. We'll be back. Very talking honored more that about you had me on. God. Thank you for coming to Rebranding God podcast. Yeah. Namaste, my friend. Namaste.